episode of the 72 Pink Canary. With us this week, we had Adam. We Dark Souls. Hello. And me. What's up? What's up? We're going to do self like depressingly it should have been and me oh, and, and me. me it is i it's a me everyone shall love me or at least i hope uh, I so it's been a while fellas what y'all been up to it has been a while been a bit yeah been a bit been a bit a bit it's, it's been, been. Bit. i haven't played a lot of games but i did see some cool stuff what kind of stuff did you see i saw Terracotta Army or uh, Terracotta Army exhibit at a local art museum. So that shit is awesome. Yeah. So these are basically the very first emperor of China when he died was buried in a tomb with like 8000 of these person-sized sculpture statue things. And they found them in like the 70s, and they're still digging them up today. That's Just really cool. nutty. It's like 2,000 years old. They so had like, I think, eight of them there at the exhibit, plus some other artifacts. Like, they had some coins where each uh, dynasty of China, before they were all unified, had a different set of currency. And some of them were like little coins, and some of them looked like little tiny swords, like oblong shaped it was weird so like the, the coin was a sword yeah like, that's not very practical for currency but you know well that, that's nice if someone tries to steal your money you always have a weapon on you <laughs> yeah it's like back the fuck <laughs> off i got a dime <laughs> something like that <laughs> but yeah, but yeah it, was, it was really cool really interesting i'm not even that big of like a history guy but just seeing something that old was incredible well it's that old and they're human-sized yeah. And there's that many of them. It's absurd. Yeah, and they were all arranged in the tomb, like set up like in battle formations and stuff when they were buried. That's crazy, crazy stuff. Are they all the exact same? No, there's uh there's different ones, like some of them are uh they had a lot of like cavalry stuff and uh there was a horse by itself. There was different types of soldiers, like the archers and the, like the swordsmen and the generals and all kinds of stuff. That's, but yeah, there there are quite a few. It's pretty cool. It's really and cool. And apparently some guy, I don't I don't know when this was, but some dude like cut the thumb off of one of them and stole it. Yes, I remember about that. I was about and like three. China was pissed. As they should have been. Like who our, does that? Our yeah, who priceless does? artifacts. You stole his fucking thumb. Yeah. It's like those people, what was it, the couple that uh, scratched their name in the side of the fucking Roman Colosseum? Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing? These are priceless artifacts. These aren't just like, it's not like some guy's, you know, art project he did 50 years ago or something. This is and historic stuff. Like, that's, I, don't, I don't get it. Now, just what do you think do being. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. What are you going to, you can't pawn it. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It's probably it's like set a, in a desk drawer yeah. or something like, hey, look at that. Hey, look, I got a thumb from an army guy from 2,000 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and just imagine being a guy working, transporting that. How stressful that job's oh, got to be to I transport that. I can't imagine how I'm, stressful they must have been with, with all of that stuff. Just they one probably, slip up, man, and you're breaking something that was made. Yeah before anything you've ever seen in your life more than likely it was the yeah. dude that built the great wall of china <laughs> if i was china i would have had like a representative fly to the states and oversee the transportation of them and stuff i almost guarantee That's... they have a rep or something in the team transporting yeah ambassador i mean that that shit's crazy i mean shit that's older than our country by a yeah. long shot. That's older than most countries by a yeah. long shot. Fucking nutty. So where was that? At the Cincinnati Art Museum. Ah, uh, down Cincy? Yep. Nice. Went there and we went to an Argent Argentinian restaurant. Oh? But it was what? like brunch, so they were serving like 
Argentina influenced brunch food. So I got like steak and eggs, but it had like this chimichurri sauce on it and the potatoes were seasoned a certain way and it was phenomenal. And we got a couple of empanadas. Mm, oh my empanadas god. Empanadas are fucking awesome. One of the best awesome. meals I've had in a yeah. long time actually. It was so good. So what I'm about to say might sound blasphemous, but I love eggs. Let, let's get that out there right now. I love eggs. But yes. When it comes to trying to get different ethnicities, I don't want to see their interpretation of eggs because there's only well, the like egg, yeah, the eggs were normal. Okay. The steak had uh the seasoning and like the sauce on it. And the potatoes had a, a different kind of seasoning that we would season potatoes with. Okay. But you put it all together, and it is magical. It is so good. That does sound good. Do you eat all your food together? Like, when it's all there, do you just, like, get pieces, or do you finish one thing off first and move on to the next thing? It depends on what I'm eating. Okay. Uh, I'm bad about, like, getting tunnel vision with my food, and I'll, like, eat all of this thing that I'm excited about, and then I'll eat all of this thing that I'm excited <laughs> yeah, about. That's but a exactly meal like that, what I do. A meal like that, I... Well, like, the potatoes and the eggs in the same bite, you know, stuff like that. You see, same I have... Bites. I have strategies. There's strategies. You can't just eat it all, just like one well, thing. Then yeah, another. there's strategies. First off, you have to leave the last bite for your favorite part. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> uh, that's like, that's number one that's in strategy. Well, actually, yeah. yeah. I, I, eat I'm the a, vegetables I'm, first before they get cold, because vegetables kind of suck with, after they've been cooked and then become cold. You see, I, I like tend, that's on my lower, lower part of strategy. I think I always just forget to eat the vegetables until they're cold. <laughs> to me, if there's mashed potatoes in the meal, everything else gets dipped into them. Yeah. Mid meal, right. if you start getting full, you have to prioritize what parts you're gonna eat yes. for the rest of your stomach capacity. You automatically oh, start issue. ranking your food as like, okay, what's yeah. gonna be left on the plate? I'm starting to get full. There's a lot still here. I'm gonna stop on the potatoes because those are hella filling and not the best part of the dish. Moving mm -hmm. on to the next thing. It, I'll keep that in mind for when I stop feeling hungry. Yeah. Except it's a steak. When there's a steakhouse, I tend to just eat the steak immediately, all of it, and then and then oh, work really? my way through the sides. Yeah. It's oh, even, see that I'm I'm different with that. Then I guess I eat everything and then eat the steak last. Like I'll leave the like I'll eat like half the steak and then eat some of the other sides. And then once everything is done, then I'll finish the other half of the steak. Okay. Just straight there. Yeah. Now I am a tunnel vision on. Oh, on steak, I am. Once I start the steak, I finish the steak. I'm not particular on the order, but once I start it, it's gone. <laughs> it's like when I'm eating a burger. Meat, meat, meat. Ah. Well, it's like when I'm eating a burger or a burrito. Once I pick it up, I don't put it back down. Yeah. Like it doesn't hit the plate again. It is eight. You can't set a burrito down. That's just messy. Yeah, I was going to say. That doesn't... It's either a fork burrito mm -hmm. or it's a you don't put it down until it's done burrito. Yeah. I never do about ever fork a burrito burritos. With a what? I don't think I've ever gotten a burrito with like sides. I think I always like everything is just in the burrito. Um, I've had it. If they're sometimes. doing it right, everything's yeah. in the burrito. <laughs> yeah. Maybe some sauce over the top or queso. I've yeah. had it where you've had side of like some beans and rice on the side as well. I think like that should just like go that. in. Yeah, okay. I mean, it should. I mean, you have a burrito. The entire There's purpose of the so burrito is you wrap the meal in the fucking tortilla. That's yeah, the point yeah, of the agree. burrito. But yeah, like for me and breakfast, what I'll do last is I'll leave whatever is going to absorb whatever's left. So like if I have hash browns, okay. they're at the end. And then whatever yeah. remnants are on the plate get stirred into the hash browns. And then yeah, it gets no, doused with Tabasco. Solid, solid strategy. I that, I'll that's allow it. That's actually a very solid New Mexican strategy. You see New Mexico plates, and it's literally just a mash of just everything most of the time. Yeah. I love that. I like Mexican restaurants. We get some nice ones. Like, they give you some rice stuff on the side. I'm like, that's going to be my mixer. Like, everything that's left is going into that. How, how do you feel about the, I, uh, the Mexican salad? Do you know what that is? The Mexican salad? Mexican no. salad? Not exactly. That's um, on, your, on your dish when you have, like, a little bit of lettuce and a tomato. That's it. Do you guys... Like on your on your Mexican oh, plates, it's oh, literally oh, just oh. like lettuce strips and then like a couple of dices of tomato oh. on the top. Yeah, that's a Mexican uh, salad. I put that inside of whatever else I'm eating. That's okay, I use I that as a condiment, not so much as eat just it. eating it. Yeah, I tend to not eat it because to me, salad <laughs> salad is what you give me to keep me entertained until I get my main course. So, um, yeah, I I don't fuck with that. 
What's it's, the quote? Salad isn't well, food. Garnish. Salad is what you eat when you're waiting on your food. Yes, that, that's my mentality. They keep you entertained <laughs> until the food's ready. Like anyone who says, oh, what'd you have for dinner? Oh, I had a nice... No, shut the fuck up. You didn't have dinner if all you had is a salad. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can make a pretty bomb salad, though. Oh, yeah. Do it up, Ray. Yeah, but that means that 90% of the good shit in it is the stuff that's not actually normally in a salad, like chicken and bacon. No. And- well, yeah, I was going to say that. That's Did the part be- of it that makes it more filling and more meal-like. But <laughs> yeah, not the salad itself. Like diced peppers, diced red onion, uh, green onion, carrots. I hate carrots in a salad. Hate them. Hate them Raw? in a salad. Whatever. Raw? Yeah, and I agree. Yeah, so to me, it's um, if I Spinach. do a salad, it's just romaine lettuce and maybe some Caesar dressing on top, but just straight romaine lettuce with nothing else. There we go. Done. It's like hmm. the least nutritious you can make a salad. Because yeah. salads are pointless. <laughs> I, I, I go well, back to my earlier we... statement. I'm partial to spinach. Oh, I love spinach. Oh, I could I use spinach the... as like the main part of the salad. You said you've been putting that in your eggs recently, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Perfect breakfast. It, like three eggs scrambled with a bunch of spinach and black beans and maybe mm. some salsa. Mm. Never so done that my eggs. Filling yeah. keeps you full. It's good. Actually, I will say this, though. Did have one awesome thing this since last cast. We went down to Oregon to do some fishing and mm-hmm. we went to a mom and pop's pancake shop. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Those pancakes got like some banana pancakes where the banana slices were in the actual pancake. Oh, nice. oh dude. So fucking good. <laughs> that sound good. So, Was it then, like a dirty diner? No, no it, it felt kind of like a Denny's kind of uh, thing. Did they have that? Yeah. That, You're like, ruining my imagination of this place by saying the word Denny's. I'm uh, sorry, but I mean appearance-wise. <laughs> well, I was a comedian that said, nobody ever goes to Denny's. They end up at Denny's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can get behind that. And then it had like this pineapple sauce, though, to put on top. Like they made oh, the syrup good. out of pineapple and oh, mm, so good. That could be good. That so, so good. good. So, food. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, other than food what's been going on um i had some uh guests come out um dobby and huge erection they actually came out to mm. seattle for uh close to a week did some good very cool. cool did some fishing saw some stuff we got some russian pastries it was delicious oh would you go back up to uh yeah there's a yeah. russian pastry shop right on pike place that market is- that was so good. The market that oh, they always show the fish being thrown. Yeah, I've been there. Oh, to the Russian pastry place? <clears throat> yeah, I don't think market? we actually ate there, but we, we were around there. Mistake. Oh, you got to go in there. So yeah. I was typing this up so much to them, and they're, everyone's thinking back their head, it's not going to live up. And then yeah. we get there, and then we eat it, and holy shit, it's still fucking awesome. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> but... But yeah, I've just been, that's the only other thing that's happened big for me since last. Nothing. I saw some of the pictures of the fish you caught. Those things were monstrous. Well, they're dinosaurs. They're fucking prehistoric. The biggest one we caught in the trip was eight foot, 200 pounds. Oh my God. Damn. Yep. That's ridiculous compared to fishing here. Cause yeah. like, we don't have water. You get like an eight pound <laughs> fish and you're like, oh hell yeah. <laughs> we don't have water. We don't yeah. have water. It's just like a puddle. One yeah, fish. you go to Walmart you're, you're, and you throw your cast into their like fish section. And you're like, I got, <laughs> I got one. I was thinking you throw out into the desert like reel in scorpions and snakes and shit. You can do that. You can reel in uh, snakes by just like, but it's like snagging it. Just like throw it out there and just pull it. <laughs> yeah, you have fun taking that off the hook. <laughs> Fuck that noise. <laughs> it's just like squirming. Yeah. Ugh. But yeah, that's all I've done. Y'all. I uh, went on a cruise. What? Oh, nice. To, Where'd you go? Uh, we went out towards the Bahama Islands, out Ooh. towards um, the main island. Uh, I don't remember all the island names because they all had like Saint something in them. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I, I, I think the only one I really remember, I think, was was one called Saint Thomas, where it rained. R- like, so each cruise, you you stop at different islands, right? And uh, you get all, you can get a chance to go off and explore the island, and there's things you can do. Well, we got there and we had a scuba diving. 
Um, ex- they're called excursion planned. Yeah. And um, nobody knew where we were supposed to go. So we ended up missing it like completely. Aww. We just totally missed that because we we're like, we're, we need to go to this place. And they're like, because we were asking locals too. Uh, but they're like, where do we need to go for this? And like, maybe that way somewhere. And we're like, okay. <laughs> they're like, it's, oh, it's by the blue building. And we're like, that one or that one. And they're like, you're lucky. I've seen it when you ask locals, like, oh, this way, this way, this way. And then they pull you into whatever they do instead of actually oh. taking you where you're asking. <laughs> no, we just totally lost. But here's the, here's the good thing, right? The reason I remember this is because when we got back to the ship, it started pouring and all the ships had to come back anyway. So I was trying to think if I felt, if I would have felt worse, had we actually made it and gone out there and then just immediately came back or the fact that we just didn't make it in the first place. So I don't know. I don't know which one was worse, but the whole cruise experience was really fun. Did yeah, the fact they, that I've also never been on a boat. So that's pretty cool. They are really, really, really fun. Um, it's pretty much a party on water for however long you're on the water. Yeah. Yeah. And our ship, um, I don't know if you're familiar with like cruise lines completely, but, uh, we were on, I think it's called harmony, the harmony line or something like that. Hmm. Um, and they have the two biggest ship, the two biggest cruise ships on, on like on, on the oceans. Um, they were huge. Like. We pulled into one of the islands and they had a carnival cruise. They had like a Disney cruise. They had some sort of New Zealand cruise or something. And all the ships were like, they paled in comparison to the ship that we were on. It was ridiculous. You know? Yes. Yeah, so seem like it could be that much difference. You should probably watch the Titanic before you try to get on the biggest ship in the world. Just saying <laughs> it doesn't always end up well. I, I know there's not a whole hours. lot of icebergs in the Caribbean, but you know, <laughs> yeah. global warming. You never, you never know. know. Might, they've been known there's to There's whales. Up we saw a whale breach the surface off Hell coming yeah. off of an island. That's whales cool. Are so cool. Yeah, did, it was pretty cool. Did you get it and get some oil? Oh, I'm not cruel, all right? No, dude, it's, the video games teach you. You kill things to craft. They give oil, you make gas. You can't say this, Eric. You're, you're ruining the video game reputation. You can't say they teach you anything. You have to say that it's just a fantasy. <laughs> yeah, I'm, so, I'm sorry. They're going to use this podcast and studies against video games now. Sorry. sorry. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I fucked us all. My apologies. Don't look you're into gonna that be on statement. The next, like, you're going to be on the next New York Times article. Gamer admits... Video games cause bad thoughts. Yeah. Fuck Moby Dick. It was Ark that ca- taught me how to kill whales. Yeah. <laughs> oh, see, now you just name dropped a game. Now they're going to get into flack, too. Yep. I'll it's let them. Over. Screw it. It's the worst right. of the survivals. <laughs> Speaking of, No Man's Sky. Fuck yes. <laughs> Fuck yes. I'll look right at the camera. Fuck yes. That game is really fun. They made... They made some graphical improvements, and it looks way prettier. Way prettier. Really? I, I didn't know they did graphic improve, yeah. improvements, too. So they didn't. Re- they adjusted the color palette a little, so the palette didn't change much. It was just the actual uh, renderings. Mm. So um, I was about to get into this with Souls before the cast. Um, a lot of people's gripe about the game is that the palette. The palette's bland. But it's because the way they designed the game, they gate the really cool planets behind probably about 10 to 15 hours worth of gameplay. And then you can start making it to the systems that look really, really, really cool. Okay. I just didn't like, I don't like a lot of the random gen stuff is what I mean. Like the, the trees and stuff, just none of them look interesting to me. None of the animals look that cool to me. I don't know. I I think, I don't know. It just doesn't look interesting to me. So I've actually found like dinosaurs that were chasing me, trying to kill me. And even on my first playthrough, when I got to the top tier planets, I mean, they were like full grown jungles and this fucking T-Rex is chasing me. It was really cool. It took so long to find that, but it happened eventually. Yeah, so the experience is cool. There's, there's always been a lot of hate against this game because of its, you know, overpromised, underdelivered. <laughs> yeah, it, oh, it had man. a terrible release and all of that stuff aside, though, at this point, because it seems like they added a lot in this last update. And a yes. lot of stuff that was actual like content, not just quality of life upgrades and stuff. Yes. So at this point, it's what it's on sale, isn't it? Like half off right now. Yeah. How did that end? It's like twenty bucks, I think. Okay. I think it's twenty or 30 30, it's 30, 30 full price now, isn't it? 
Uh, I thought there was a big price. I, I, I thought my... 30 was the sale. Oh, okay. That could it might be, it be too. still a 60 game. Either way, um, I guess what I'm getting at is um, at this point, is it does it feel like a full game? Does it feel like the price they're so, asking is what you're getting what you're paying for? Or So I'm not a great person to ask if you say it's a full game because to me, it was a full game to start with now. Yeah. But what to say is now that they've done the multiplayer, they've added the whole, I'll get into some other stuff they've added. I mm -hmm. think 40 bucks is a fair asking price and a sale price, probably price point 30 bucks. You're not going to feel too bad. 20 bucks. You're going to feel really good about it. Right. That, that, that's how I view it. But like I said, I didn't buy into the pre-hype. All that pre-hype I looked at and said, that's not feasible. I'll see what's there. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it, like, it does seem like a game that only certain types of people would like. It's not one of those, like everybody should try it. Yeah, it's chill. If you're a COD or run and gun gamer that needs constant shit blowing up and shooting, don't touch it. If you can't it, sit down and enjoy Terraria, don't touch this. It is a survival uh, game. You, you get resources, you build things to get more resources, to build more things, to get more resources. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's definitely that element to it. Absolutely. And now the, the dog fighting is more prevalent, which is kind of fun. So okay. like if you're carrying a lot of really good resources, pirates will scan your ship so you have that and they'll engage you. And they'll try so to kill you before you get those resources to be able to sell them. Is the AI hard? Are they like, can they actually kill you? I haven't found any that are hard, but they'll swarm sometimes. Mm. Like there's a really cool mission you can luck into where uh, you unlock a freighter, like a huge giant class ship that you can actually have an armada of, which is really cool. It's a whole new system in the game that wasn't there before. But you, I landed into the system and it said, hey, this freighter is in distress. It's sending out a beacon. You can help it if you want. So I went over there and I helped it. And there were so many of them. I almost died. It was super close to me, <laughs> just my ship being gone. Ended up what beating it. Die? Huh? What happens if you die? Um, oh. You respawn. And I think you respawn in your same ship. But I don't know if you have multiple ships if you lose one. But you'll respawn yeah. and you have to get back to the grave site to be able to get your shit back. And I think there's a time limit on that. Are you saying so. this game copied Dark Souls? <laughs> no, I am saying it copied RuneScape. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Fair Fuck enough. you guys, Dark Souls. <laughs> um, but um, it, it's really cool, the freighter part, because you have your own missions where you send them out on convoys and they go explore stuff and they can, you can lose them. We're talking massive, expensive ships. And if you send them on something a little too hard, it's gone. You lose it. Like, it'll get attacked. They can't get back. It's fucked. So they've added a whole new element of that, and they completely reworked the storyline. So it's no longer, well, you found 10 of these stones. Now go to the center of the universe and start over. It's not that anymore. That was so bad. That was so like... There, so there is like an... Is there an end game, or is there a constant objective you're working towards, or is it really just... So grinding resources so you can get more resources so you can get better resources there's an objective technically okay. but the game even realizes that a lot of people just like to chill so mm -hmm. after you start it it just tells you like hey do you want to keep pressing with this or do you just want to go fucking do stuff and it'll stop telling you about the missions and just let you explore and do whatever you want but there is or there are there are missions well like it, it's kind of a story it's more I story. I, yes, I wouldn't I call what it. I'm asking is, is the entire point of the game basically explore all these cool randomly generated places as long as you want and relax? Or is there like some, other than that, is there some substance to it? There, there is a storyline. You had amnesia. You woke up in the middle of nowhere and you're finding these clues are left behind for you. You don't know who you are, why they're there why things are lining up the way they are for you. And it's a discovery of who you are and what you were doing. And then as I don't know about the new story because I haven't gotten far into it because I'm a, I will explore shit. Yeah. So I don't know how actual, how much the content's there. I've heard it's decent, but anything's better than what was there before. Literally. Sure. Yeah. I'm someone yeah, who doesn't whatever. care about stories, but there was nothing there before. Yeah. 
Well, it was even worse than nothing. It was like you got to the end and it's like now start over. It they they flipped you the fuck off and said fuck yeah. you. <laughs> it was pretty bad. I like the idea of of having a game just to chill out and explore. Um, and I know that that could be a limited thing. You know, it's not something you're going to sink 200 hours in, or maybe you would, but I'm, I'll probably end up close by the time I'm done playing it. What about the like base concept is really cool. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. compared to all the survival games, it's yeah. just like I said before, it was like being in space just feels much better than exploring an island with dinosaurs. See, it was, it just, it feels good to be in the future than in the past, if that makes sense, I guess. What, I love being in the future. What I really liked is, you know what? This boor- world's getting kind of boring. Zoop, go to a brand new one. Yeah, that's really and, cool. I mean, you might go to one where, okay, it's seated very similarly. The things are close. Okay, I'm just going to do another one now. And you can just keep jumping until you find one that's really cool. And it's like, you know what? I want to make my base here. So that, was, you, that leads into my next question. What is the base building like? How much can you do with that? Um, it's set pieces. Okay. But there's a lot of different ones you can do. I haven't gotten super deep because I I like playing more nomadic where I don't really mm-hmm. set a huge base. Mm-hmm. But they have different rooms you can do for different things. You can have research going on to get you some perpetual elements like some carbon. You can set up farms so you can get certain uh, plants to grow to give you certain resources. Mm-hmm. If you get certain centers, you can hire aliens to come and work at your base to keep things going. It's, so you can have AI emphasis. workers. Yeah. So there's a lot of a lot of emphasis on resource collection and stuff. Yes. Resources They're, are the point of the game. You mm-hmm. will always be striving for some form of resource, even if it's just to make fuel to get to your next spot. Okay. So it's not so much juggling resources literally to survive, it's juggling resources to be able to transport yourself. And survive what as well. What all do you everything? everything you mine for so your sheet you have a life support system that slowly degrades and you need Mm -hmm. oxygen or life support cells to replenish it so you can find oxygen-based life and like get the oxygen out of it or you can make these life cells and then your fuel you have different elements to get the fuel for your plane or your ships Mm -hmm. so it's a lot of different elements (laughs) that you need elements for (laughs) yeah i get it (laughs) so it's it's pretty broad um, but like I said, if anyone's thinking about it, if you don't like Terraria or Minecraft or even a, maybe even don't starve on the fringe, I mean, if you can't enjoy one of those games, you're not going to enjoy this game. It's not for you. Is there but, a way you can put the like focus on combat? Is there a way for you to like, yeah, be a um, combat person? You can shoot whatever the fuck ship you find. You can, okay. you can attack freighters. Now, you're probably, I haven't tried it yet, but I'm assuming once you start to do that, you're going to unleash holy hell on yourself because there's going to be a lot of ships coming at you. Does this scale with multiplayer? So, like, if, if, if there was 10 ships coming after you, you, if you were attacking a freighter, does that double to 20 or 50, whatever? No, there's no scale to multiplayer, but there's only okay. four per instant, technically. And here's something I want to check out. So, it's supposed to be a persistent world. Regardless of who's in your server or not, it's a persistent world. So I, we have a few people that are playing in the Discord. I want to get three of us, three different instances at the same location and start forming the planet to see what happens. Hmm. To see who wins out and that kind of stuff. Because there's some really cheesy stuff you can do with the item duplication, I believe, because of this. Hmm. Okay. But that, that's really, really weird meta kind of stuff. But yeah. Do you feel bad about item duplication? Have, oh, you felt, have you ever duplicated an item and been like, oh, I shouldn't have done this? <laughs> I don't feel bad about it, but I do feel it breaks games. And not in the way where, oh, it's easy now, but in a way of, oh, I don't want to play this anymore. I'm able to do that. Oh, really? Like I've always just, loved just item duplication, like Borderlands, any sort of Destiny stuff. <laughs> but you see, if Actually, I get that's... unlimited money and stuff, if money can buy me what I want and I can get unlimited money, it ruins the game for me. Hmm. I, yeah, I guess. Because you stop having, like, there's nothing to work towards at that, yes. at that point. Yes. I am an RPG, watch the numbers grow kind of guy. Whenever yeah. I don't have to watch them grow and I just tell them what to be is when it stops being fun to me. I feel like a good game will put a limit on what you can get with money and make you do alternate things to get good gear, if that makes sense. 
Like, or a uh, money hunger game will just make you buy keys. Oh God. <laughs> a money hunger game and maybe also you could uh, like kind of tag on their badly designed game. Oh, just I like, mean, like buy loot boxes and buy loot boxes, get this gun. Or can we tag on a mobile game? Or is that oh, too far? <laughs> mo- mobile's always nah. there. But that's always because they're normally free too. Mobile is accessible. Yeah, so it is. I'm down for the grind for items game loop. I like that the Diablo S kind of loop that a lot of games are doing now. But I know a yeah, lot oh, of yeah. people that don't like grinding for items. That's not what they find enjoyable about the game. I wonder what uh, most games make you grind for. Like, okay, yeah, maybe not yeah, grind, yeah. but like almost every game makes you do some sort of loop for items. Now, unless you're talking like pure story. Well, I or mean, like point and click. There's Game. stuff like a Horizon Zero Dawn. There's no randomly, grind for. but there's no Diablo style loot. I'm talking about Diablo styles where you're killing Isn't things it? to drop. I think it is random. No. Well, no, 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 okay, random? Let, let me rephrase that. Um, there's that has resources that are dropped that you can use to make things and buy things. I'm talking right. about legitimately. Things drop oh, items. Like they maxing stats and stuff. Like Borderlands yeah, like style. Borderlands, Diablo, Destiny. Yeah. Like dro- guns will get dropped. That one. That was one of my favorite parts of Borderlands. Is the random gun drops and then mm. the oh, way Borderlands did their three guns. more damage than my current weapon. That's cool. The way Borderlands did their guns was brilliant. They had different manufacturers with different parts. Like if you use modding software to make the guns yourself. You could actually yes. do that based off the building blocks they did. It was so yeah. they could randomly seed all the guns together, and it was just brilliant. Yeah, it was really cool. Like this really, always had fire damage. This company tended to have more long range stuff, that kind of thing. Jacobs mm-hmm. was always single shot, high damage. Yeah. Oof, high damage. I don't know, man. man I think that that, no, we should that play Borderlands wrong. again. <laughs> hey, I was playing Borderlands with Tom and uh, RS for a little bit. Yeah. Well, three supposed. To, um, they announced three, didn't they? Did they? No, they oh. didn't. Not yet. They or said was, that they're work. I believe they said they're working on it, but they haven't done any full announcement on it. Mm. Some reason I thought it, was, it, it may have been like a fan made thing. I saw like a tech reveal video a long time ago or something for Borderlands Three. I thought it was. They were showing off how lighting and explosions work or something. Either way, they need to get that. into that. Damn it. Yeah, they do. I think I, if I remember correctly, they're supposed to show it off at E3 next were, year. Were any of the I don't remember how many games there's been since Borderlands 2, but were the newer ones any good? I the didn't pre-sequel? play the prequel. There was a prequel. Yeah, was, Wasn't there another one, or is, or is that it? They ha- oh, you know what? They there was a Telltale, a Telltale one. Yeah. That doesn't, that doesn't count. Thank you. Oh, but it's Thank so you. good. It's so good, though. Honestly, I would say the Telltale game is better than the pre-sequel. It, it's, it's, it's fun. So and the story is full Borderlands. I don't like telltale style games much um i mean it initially got me because the story was really good but i'm like eh but i think i could get behind the borderlands one maybe just because the characters in borderlands are so fucking awesome oh yeah that's long, the main reason why as long as it has tiny tina i'm uh, i'm game i gotta have me some tiny tina oh. i don't know if i can comment i just like the uh catch a ride guy oh dude, I, ride. I love that guy get you one Oh man, his whole family is just a mess. Oh, when I he was talking, whole... <laughs> when you had to get his wife or something like that in Borderlands Two, God, that was awesome. Mm-hmm. Oh yes, yep. Uh, well, let's see, because his his family is just wacky. They have to. They're the whole like they're the people who live out in like the desert. They're just kind of like hillbilly yeah. sort of people. You got, but then you got like Moxie, who was his mom, I think. Moxie, Moxie was, was his mom? mom. Yeah, I believe Moxie was his mom, and then uh, oh. Ellie was his sister. Hmm. It is it is a weird family tree. Uh, I'm gonna just crazy I'm gonna install kick. Borderlands again. It's fun. I oh, just want to. I just want a new one. I can tell you how to mod it too. Borderlands Two modded. It, the, it feels uh, real good. When's the last time you played the first one? Um, years ago. Is the first I one just, noticeably worse than the second one. Yes. Yeah. That's, really? Yeah. I think it's the been story. So long since I've played the first one. I think the story is okay. Oh, maybe as good if not slightly i don't know if it's slightly better i don't know it's just kind of a drag to play borderlands one after playing borderlands 2 with all the dlc and all the content in borderlands 2 the dlc was great and their idea of super bosses that was really cool 
Yeah, really, all really the raid cool. bosses in it are fun. Um, but I will say the story to one, the okay, it's ten years old. Fuck it. The big spoiler about the vault at the end was awesome. To figure really? out what the vault really was. Yeah, and that might be why the ending of Borderlands Two is kind of meh because you already knew. Yes, like exactly. They they need they need something else there or something. I don't know. I'm not a story writer. That's their job, not mine. But they did have Terramorphous. <laughs> that yeah. thing was a bitch until you finally got the items farmed. Oh, really? It was really easy because I immediately... The first group I got into to do that showed me there was a rock where you can hide behind where it can't hit you. Yes. So I just and, did that. <laughs> I cheesed it that way. But even then, every once in a while, there's if there was... I can't remember what it was, but he was able to do a certain type of attack that would hit you randomly oh, uh, every yeah. once in a while. Yeah, so you had I to make sure that. to keep yourself healed. But <laughs> yeah. was was Border was Borderlands the first like first person shooter that put that much RPG <clears throat> element into the game? Um, did that kind of pave the way for stuff like Destiny? Or I, I would say it probably paved the way for Destiny. Destiny was a blend of like Halo meets Borderlands. Yeah, I don't and know. There still isn't really anything like Borderlands in terms of like I was just trying to like, think of something before guns. Borderlands that still had that much. The As, RPG for a shooter, it. no. I think that's probably why it did so well because it was the yeah, first, it was really unique. And it's still there's nothing really like it still in terms of random gun drops and like the story and effort they put into the game and you know the total just cheese around the game too. It's just so funny. It's a it's, funny game. It's a beautiful. And it package. would not. It wouldn't have been nearly as good without that cel shaded art style too. No, I think that that made, that made it. it. Did you it ever was, see the demo of the uh, original graphic style? No, I didn't. It wasn't always shell shaded. There's a there's a demo of E3 where it was uh, they were going for realistic graphics settings. Oh, I need to go back and watch that. I don't know how I feel about that. I think it might have even been third person as well. What? <laughs> third person could be okay because you it know your you know your characters. It's not like you're supposed to be this character. It's a it's an actual character that you picked. Yep, again, uh, you can mod Borderlands 2 quite a bit, and there's a third-person mod that's pretty good. Um, there's a lot of mods for for Borderlands 2 that I didn't even know existed until uh, I started playing with Tom and RS again. That there's a mod that lets unlimited characters into your into your game. It, it cuts off that four-player co-op limit, and you can just pull in as many people have the mod. Do they um, bump up the difficulty as more people come? I don't think so. I think it stopped scaling after four people. Ah. So yeah, it was it was kind of just like I don't know how much you guys know about uh, the meta for Borderlands Two at the end game, but the Gunzerker had the highest DPS in the game, and it was kind of just mm. a bunch of them running around, just instant killing the invincible bosses. So <laughs> I actually never beat the second one. Really? I don't. Oh, I don't really? remember how far I got, but I never did complete it. That game I played like no other in my life. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it still I, has one of my most hours played in any game. Because I remember a thousand pointed it, DLC came out, we mm. ran through it immediately. Next DC, DLC came out, ran through it immediately. Yeah. Oh my god. Dude, the oh. nights of the DLC jobs were so great. Because you just saw like the population spike. You just like, sometimes it'd be hard to get into a game, then every, every DLC job, it was just like instantly matched. It felt good. It's what the Borderlands stuff was supposed to be going, not Borderlands, holy shit. Destiny stuff with their way their DLCs work. Their their idea initially for Destiny was it's not a lifestyle game. It's a game that you put on the shelf and when we release new content, you dust it back off and come back to it, which is exactly what Borderlands was doing. Exactly. Mm. And it was awesome. But it was. Speaking of slightly older games. Gameplay, this still looks way worse. Oh, oh you, you <laughs> that up? Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> So older well, it was games, a realistic style like 10 years ago, so it has to look bad. Oh, God. Anything going for realism never ages. No. Ever. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So, um, Adam, yeah. you were playing some Battlefield 1. Yes. Along I'm, with a lot of people in the Discord. <laughs> yes. We are super late to the Battlefield 1 train. Super late. But it went on sale. It was like 10 bucks. So, and I've... Uh, the last Battlefield I played was 3, and that was the only Battlefield I've played. Well, no, wait. I played uh, Bad Company 2 a little bit. But, uh, yeah, I've always been a fan of Battlefield, just in general. 
of the casual shooters, I much preferred it over like a Call of Duty. Mm-hmm. Um, so we all jumped on Battlefield 1 and we've been having a blast with it. Uh, not so much this past week or two, but before that we were playing pretty consistently and it is amazing. Yeah, it's I've so noticed good. I've noticed something with our Discord. It's um when someone strikes a game that's really good and at a really good price point, everyone jumps on it and then within two yep. to three weeks it is hot shit. <laughs> and then good luck finding mm-hmm. a group. Yeah, kind of. I mean, th- there are still people in our Discord playing it now. Yeah. Uh, but it was like us with Siege yeah, for a while. Everyone played it. And then yes. eh, just every once in a yes, while now. It's kind of died out. Battlefield 1 is just so, it's so good as a casual shooter. And it is, it is still absolutely gorgeous to look at. And some of the levels have breathtaking scenery. The music is really, really good. Um, the World War One thing makes it kind of interesting. I know it's it's not like historically accurate World War One, but it's still you know that style. But it's good. It's it's a lot of fun. Okay, so for a realistic kind of shooter, do you prefer yep. historically or like historic old World War One, World War Two, modern or advanced? Uh, if it's going for realism, I'm not talking Halo advanced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, either modern or historic or older. I don't tend to care for futuristic stuff as much. Yeah, I'd go modern as well. I uh, like I don't actually like the uh historic one that much either. I kind of like just the new look of guns mm-hmm. and yeah. uh new more more recent equipment so it's like you know the loadout stuff. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I don't know how I feel about loadouts. Um, I feel that it was that first it was a really good idea, but then I've gotten to the point where I like the Halo style drops. Oh yeah, I like I items or weapons on map. Yeah, I agree with that too. The, the only thing I don't like about that is it doesn't give you something to grind for. So in a casual shooter like that, gameplay can get pretty stale if you're not constantly trying to get something. So I like being able to see that. Oh, I need to play this class for however many experience points I need to get this gun I wanted to try out kind of thing. Or this attachment on this gun. I feel like Halo supplemented that with the armor unlocks. Yes. I was just going to say that. Yes. Yeah. You Um, you grind for for it to look cool. Oh, okay. (laughs) You would have to do certain things to unlock certain armors and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's always nice. Because I think in Halo 3 they tied it to achievements, which was pretty interesting. Most of them, I don't think all of them were achievement based, but like yeah, the high boost of stuff was all achievement based, and that was what everyone yeah. wanted because the high boost looked fucking cool. Oh, yeah, everyone loved that. Everyone ran that, and like at the end of the Halo 3 life, life's like uh, it was just Hayabusa and then recon armor. Yeah, everyone had that fucking sword on their back. Everyone, yep, <laughs> yep. <laughs> There's a sword, you gotta have it. Yeah, damn. Oh, sure. yeah, there's a sword Dude. in uh, Battlefield 1, a sword or a bayonet, awesome. sword. Both. Oh, nice! I remember a, a secondary, or if you jump on the cavalry, you get a sword. I remember oh, yeah. Dlas telling me a story when he was playing Battlefield One. He charged with a bayonet, and I guess when you charge, it locks you into a charge for a little bit of time. Yeah. He accidentally charged over a cliff. <laughs> Didn't die, but the guy was on top of the cliff trying to pin him down the whole time. So he's just waiting him out. Just I was in the chat with him. He was just waiting for this guy to leave. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that sucks. Yeah. The best thing about the charge in uh, Battlefield 1 is it breaks FOV. So, like, if you max your FOV, or it used to, it would, it would, if you max your FOV, you could charge and it would increase your FOV no matter what. And it would eventually, it would turn to the point where you could see just 360 degree around you. And it just looked, <laughs> it looked like you were going through light speed. It was bad. <laughs> That's cheap. Well, I remember um, AMD used to have a thing with their graphics cards where you could set up HydroVision. It was supposed to extend your FOV. And I always thought, I'm like, in shooters, if you extend FOV, that's that's a big advantage. Yeah. That's a really big advantage. Like, to a I point, don't, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, if you still suck, it doesn't matter if you see the guy coming. You, know, you just know <laughs> yeah. he's going to kill you instead of wondering who killed you. Well, yeah, <laughs> but some fish eye, too much fish eye can be disorienting. Eh, true. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. I've never tried to play a shooter with the FOV cranked all the way up, but Oh really? That's how I play every not all the way every up. shooter. I, mean, I bump it up a little depending on the game. I, I typically don't trust it max FOV. 
I think Rocket League's the only thing where what I went and I maxed everything, and then I realized my aerials completely suck ass because I can't really get good accurate contact. Yeah, you can't do that. Yeah. But yeah, Battlefield 1, I thought that was interesting. Battlefield 1 is good, yes. And you played the beta good. for Battlefield 5? Just really, really briefly. Um, I only played probably three or four rounds. Uh, it was just one map. Uh, visually stunning, for? but honestly, it was kind of there was a lot going on visually with the like the post effects and stuff. It was a snowy map, so there's snow everywhere. Oh, but it just uh, seemed really visually kind of noisy, at least that map. So hopefully they dial that back a bit, but um, otherwise yeah. it, it seemed really cool. I will the say snow this, effects were weird. Yeah, but, but it's beautiful. It's so it, good looking. You do know that's a company though that will adjust off the beta findings i mean we've seen that in the past that they've opened an open beta it's led to game changes yeah before oh, yeah. the game release i mean that's one thing i will give them credit for battlefield 3 there was a broken ass element in that game and they fixed it before yeah. launch because of the beta <laughs> mm -hmm. um the only thing i didn't like about the beta is they changed the revive mechanics a little bit so you don't have to be medic to revive anymore which is cool uh, you just have to go through a much longer animation. Okay. So you're basically just like, come on, buddy, you can get up, I'll pat you on the back, and pull your hand, and raw raw good. him into health. Yeah, every, everything's mm -hmm. healed. Uh, the medic, but when you play the medic, it's not as instantaneous as the other games. It you still have to sit through a second and a half animation or so. Oh. Uh, so hopefully that doesn't lead to a lot of like cheap deaths, but um. It did seem I feel like weird. I, I feel thought that, that would cut down on the cheap deaths because then you don't get revived and instantly killed again. Like there's a possibility for the revive reviver to die before getting revived and just dying with them. I find yeah. that would yeah. probably drive your medic class down to where well, it's not instant. I have to wait anyway. I'll wait a couple extra seconds and have better perks. Oh uh, yeah, I could see that. I mean, once you start probably getting into higher level, that would be my assumption. Unless my own. Uh, we'll we also have like the the medic packs too to heal people that's pretty important True. healing mm -hmm. man all this talk about, yeah, about those classes makes me think mag <laughs> with the heal gun yeah it's like a febreze spritzer yeah you just spray people and they get healed <laughs> here you go buddy <laughs> <laughs> that game was so good it, it looked like in hindsight it looked shitty but it was so good yeah it was interesting Battlefield Five, if Battlefield Five is looking really good, though I'm excited for it. I'm ready for another World War II shooter. I know really? COD just came out with one not too long ago, but man, I haven't played a World War II shooter really since um, World at War. World at War, yeah. And I was what still in high school when that came out, so. Or maybe yeah, not. I was. No, I you. What year it came out? Um, you were graduated at that point, but. Oh, uh, okay. Modern Warfare Four or. Yeah, four was the big one about when you graduated. But okay. either way, I don't like playing that era. I don't. I find I, it bland. And a lot of it has to do with actually the game design because they tend to be palleted very brown and gray. Oh, God. It's so draining on the soul, those colors. Yes. I mean, that's all those fucking maps are. They never do yeah. the Pacific stuff. They do the Pacific stuff where it's vibrant and green and stuff. That would be mm -hmm. different. That could be fun. But it's always, here's Normandy, here's some blown up town, you're rolling through with panzers. It's dark, uh, it's rainy. Always. Yep. Battlefield, Every one did have a good, Battlefield 1 does have a good variety of map uh, styles and locations and uh, palettes and whatever. But um, hopefully hopefully they keep that variance. I know World War II tends to be dreary, but yeah, hopefully they can. I mean, the I, map I, I played was a snow map. I mean, it's pretty bright. <laughs> I, I will give that to COD. I like the fact that they tend to do smaller maps and they tend to base them off of like a single point, like a house on a hill around this kind of mm -hmm. stuff. I mean, I like those kind of maps that they've done. I don't, I guess Counter Strike does that to a degree too. Making but maps would be really the, hard. It's good for the run and gun aspect. Yes. And to me, it's, it's good for the palette because when you have a single point of focus, you could customize it. It doesn't have to be this destroyed town that has buildings over here and there and mm. debris. <laughs> it could just be something else. To be fair, most of the battlefield maps start fine and then they get destroyed and there's debris everywhere. 
it doesn't take long. It's like five seconds. In Battlefield 1, when we were running around, I would see 90% of the houses leveled in like five minutes. What was it being leveled yeah. by? People like kicking it with horses or something? Tanks. Tanks. Yeah, there were, there were a lot of tanks in that, I feel like. That's oh, that's high. right. Because that was a great war where you had uh, tanks versus horses. Who will win? Yep. <laughs> Uh, speaking of uh, war stuff, though, Souls, you are playing Warframe. That yes. name what doesn't mean. Well, I was gonna say that name doesn't mean shit. There is so many fucking things that take the Warframe lore and make a random ass game out of it. What are you actually playing? Because I don't know what the fuck you're playing. <laughs> um, like, is it an RTS shooter? Oh yeah, no, I'm playing the shooter, like the the MMO. Vermintide. The MMO? No, like Warframe, the game. So oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm thinking Warhammer. Sorry. Whoopsie. Oh, yes. I was really confused. I was so confused. Yeah, yeah. Warframe. About. Free Destiny. So many Warframe games. And wasn't that a ninja game for a while? Like ninja seeming because of sword stuff? I don't think there are there are sword stuff in it, but I think for the most part it was always guns. I don't know. I, I'm late to the Warframe game. I'm super late. This game has been out for years, like four or five years. One of the most, like, one of the most, I think my friend was telling me who plays this game a lot, uh, their wiki is the second, either the second or first most updated wiki on like fandom or something like that. Cause people wow. just love it. It's, it's a huge game and I'm late is it, to it. Is it the free to play one? Is it free to play? Yeah. Yeah. It's free to play. Um, uh, it is hard to get into though. Mm, you like, have to have Google open on your other on your other monitor or your phone every step of the way. Literally, you can't close it. So is um, it multiplayer based or first person ba- or first player based? It's first person shooter, uh, but it's it's multiplayer. Yeah, it's all about like it is an MMO. It's an MMO. I would say you gotta grind. You gotta grind materials to get better weapons or to upgrade weapons or to craft. It's all about crafting things, you know. You craft your you have to craft your weapons, you have to craft your um your companions. I had to I had to breed my own dogs. You have to breed dogs <laughs> to get better better stats. Space dogs. They're space dogs. Space dogs. Yeah, it's all in space. Everything's about exploring the galaxy with in made space. up in space. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, it is all that. It, it's 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 all about leveling up and getting stronger. I don't even know what the what the actual power cap is. I know that I've seen level two hundred enemies, and your max level is thirty. So it's oh. all about like mm. it's all about padding stats so you can actually hang in there with them. So like min maxing, or is it just you just absolutely min maxing? Okay, no, it's absolutely min maxing. There's a lot of what you, so the way you min max isn't so much through your weapons and getting new weapons because you can use. They did an interesting thing where you can use just about anything in the game, and all your true damage comes from things called mods, which is what you put on your weapons. So almost every build I've seen for you, you have um, your Warframe, which is your actual ability based character. There's a bunch of Warframes in the game. Each one has different abil- four different abilities. And then you have a primary, a secondary, and then a melee weapon. You can use anything, and you mod each one. So almost every build I've seen has just like a straight-up health increase mod on your Warframe, so you last longer. Or a straight-up damage increase on your primary weapon, or a critical increase on your melee weapon. Something like that, you know? So you can use anything, and all your damage comes from mods. I Which like cool. that because that lets you find a gun you like. That's my biggest beef with uh, weapon grind games is you yeah. find a gun you like and then it gets obsolete and you can't yep. find that gun in a stronger version. Yeah, no, all, all the guns are, as far as I know, um, very playable. I don't know, like, I, again, I'm super late, so I don't really know what the most viable guns are, but I've, I've used a lot of weapons because the way you level up in that here's the other thing the way you level up in that game isn't just through playing you have to switch what you're using every so often otherwise you stop gaining progress so like let's say you you get a you get a weapon to level the the max level i think for everything is 30 so you get a weapon to level 30 all of a sudden it's like i want to level up more you have to switch your weapon you can't Mm -hmm. can't keep using that weapon um, you have to you have to switch through your weapons, through your warframes, your melee, all this stuff, your companions. 
Um, you have to level everything up individually, and that's what your total rank is from. But it, but so let's say you have everything right now. You're running level thirty. Mm -hmm. If you yep. switch something out and level it up again, does your level still increase, or does it decrease once you sub out and increase as you level up? It doesn't. De it never decreases. Your level will never decrease. Um, so but you can't level a thing up more than once. So even if you sell a weapon that's level thirty, buy it again at level one, and level it to level thirty again, that doesn't increase. You can only level something up max one time, if that makes sense. Okay. So yeah. So what's a get? What do you gain for leveling a weapon to max and then going to the next and taking it to max? You gain what's called mastery, and you get mastery levels, which increases your, um, what's the word? Your arsenal, because then you can go and buy different weapons or buy blueprints okay. to different weapons. Better. I don't know if it's technically better weapons, but just different weapons. Okay, that's cool. So there is a hook in the game that makes you change weapons. It's not just because yeah. you can't level anymore. It's because you gain more from leveling something else next. Mm -hmm. You gain more from leveling something else. So that's cool. It's it's really fun. And like I said, I'm super late, so everybody else in the game is way ahead of me. And um there are a lot of very grindy mechanics. Everything has crafting time in that game. So like let's say you want to play a new warframe, you got to first off, you got to grind the materials to craft. Normally it's about three parts. You get three parts, you get um the blueprint and then you get the blueprint for the actual warframe. So you craft each of the three parts and then get the three parts and craft the Warframe. So each of the parts will take about 12 hours to craft real time. Oh, shit. And then to craft the Warframe, it's about three days. <laughs> three days crafting time. So I was about to ask, where do they get their money? And now I see. You could probably pay <laughs> to fast forward that, can't you? Oh, you totally, yeah, you definitely Okay, can. okay, there, but, there's the money. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's probably not their main. That's actually probably the the least thing they get their money from. Um, you, they have an in-game, uh, trading thing, so you can buy stuff off of other players and, you know, they have their whole economy system set up. So with the premium currency, and then, um, you can also buy, uh, extra slot, like kind of like, I don't know if you play Path of Exile, you can buy inventory slots. Okay. Um, so you can hold more weapons or more Warframes or stuff like that. That's probably their main thing. Cause honestly, uh, time boosts are super cheap. Like if you wanted to boost a three day thing, it's like ten cents probably. If I'm if I I don't know the exact conversion, but it's like ten cents worth of premium currency. Um, is that yeah, it, it's it's pretty easy to just grind your things down and be like, all right, I'm done for the day. I'll, I'll log back in tomorrow when this is done crafting, and then start leveling stuff up. So or, or you just keep doing something else. That's always my thing with free games. It's I love free games. I understand they have to do it. I'm always hesitant to jump in until I know how they do it. Where are they making their dime? Yeah, they have their premium. How much pages. is this going to be a pain in the ass if I don't want to put any money into it? Yes. Oh, my I God. There's some things you can't put money into that are a pain in the ass. There's an item that I was trying to get. <laughs> there was a mod that has a 0.05% chance of dropping off of a single enemy. Oh, fuck. I know that life, man. You're there I for can't. a month. Yeah. I I was like, that was the point where I was looking at the market like, do I trade somebody for this? Like, I, I did not. It's I'm still deciding whether or not I want to grind that chance out because I'm already not a lucky person in general like that. I'm literally going to get it on like the hundred thousandth try. It's it's not even that's not even a question for me. Yeah, the, the chances of that drop. That's absurd, man. That is yeah. absurd. It's and that's, like, that's not one thing. That's a lot of things. It's five and 10,000. That comes in to be what? One every 4,000. Every 4,000 kills, you'd have a chance of getting one. It's, it's yeah. It's that's, rough, dude. That's a and crazy that's, low. That's one thing. I'm, and there's a lot of things that are needed for completing builds that are that low of a chance. And there's stuff that only appear. There's I don't know the actual chances of them, but there's a certain trader who comes every other weekend that trades off a certain currency that you only get from selling him certain things. Like it's it's you know super specifics. Um, he only comes every other weekend, and he sells like what they're called primed mods, which are basically better versions of your mods, so you get more you know more damage, you know, or whatever. Yeah. Um, and. That's also a super low chance for him to bring the item that you need. And then you're waiting two weeks if he doesn't bring you the right item. It's not even about grinding. It's just like hoping he brings you what you want every two weeks. 
And they don't have any pay mechanic into that? No, there's no pay mechanic besides buying. You can buy their currency and trade another player premium currency. You know, that, that, that's when the marketplace comes in. Oh, oh, so in the marketplace, you have to trade premium currency? <clears throat> um, most people do. I mean, like, if you, if you can obviously trade, like, uh, I want this for that, whatever. Um, okay. But yeah, most, most people put up a, a price on their items for it's called platinum. So it's like that car, a mod. I was looking at mods and because uh, I wanted one of them, and one of the prices is like 140 platinum, which um, I believe is like close to $10. I don't actually know the actual conversion rate still. I think it's probably somewhere around the $7 range. All right. The so thing with the, although they put, a, they put sales on their premium currency a lot, like a lot, a lot. Every day you log in, you have a chance of getting a, a coupon basically to buy premium currency. For discount or for free? For for discount. Also, oh. you can get you can get free currency too. I think. So how do you guys feel about paying in a free game? I'm okay with it. It depends on what it is. I don't like loot crates. Uh it's pretty much my only caveat. I don't like games that are designed to be unnecessarily a time sink unless you pay. You can yeah. give me paid cosmetics all day long, but if it's, you know, grind this unnecessary amount for this small thing or pay this money, I, I'm not a big fan of that. When the pay is part of the game mechanic. Yeah. 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 But like, yeah, like I said, Warframe isn't quite like that because you can't just straight up buy the mod you want from their marketplace. You have to either grind or trade somebody else. And that's how I feel like. Uh, Pokemon Go, it's one of those things where I, I throw them money. I don't care because it's something where I don't have to and it doesn't make the game... Like, the game's not dependent on it. And mm -hmm. I play a fuck ton of it. I have this weird rationality of how much time have I spent in this game? How much have I paid for it? It's okay to do this. What do yeah, you buy sense. in Pokemon Go? Um, so they have raids now, which is like really high, strong Pokemon that you get groups together to fight like you would in a WoW raid. And, oh. um, you have to have a raid pass to do that. And you get one free per day. But if you try to like go on a run and do multiples, you have to buy a one or buy one out of the store, which is a buck. Hmm. So like if you get hooked up with a raiding party and you're going around doing different raids, you'll end up buying three or four passes that day just to be able to keep up with it. It's not yeah. something you have to do. It's optional to get stronger. Right, shit. yeah. At least, but they give you one every day. So yeah, one free every day. That's not hateful. And to be honest, like if you're focusing on it for a day, you're probably not doing more than six anyway. So it's not like you can pay to get this incredible arsenal. Because even after you win the raid, you still have to catch it after and there's a chance of failure. So yeah, you paid a buck, you still might not get it. And man, I've been doing a fuck ton of that recently. There is community groups all over the fucking place. So like random people yeah. post like, hey, there's a raid here. Anyone want to join? And like here come 10 people from cross town to go do it. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. Is the, is the community there still pretty big for that game? Yes. So um, but, Tom was on. You, a, you live in a, a very populated area, though. So that's that helps. Mm. Well, I'm in the city. I'm in the southern end, though. So it's more like a Dayton area. -ish. Okay. So I will say Tom had this idea about six, seven months ago where he was telling like, it's dead. It's dead. It's not happening much anymore. Man, this community is still huge. When you know where the gyms are and you look, you'll see people. Like when they mm. do community days, you see everyone out in their fucking phone. I mean, everyone. There's this <laughs> area where we would go and like through the week, you'll see a few people. Weekend, it's a decent amount. When they have a community event, it is fucking packed. And I think maybe one out of every 20 people aren't, don't have a phone in their hand. It is absurd. <laughs> wow. So that's, the game that's still, cool. Yeah, that game's still fucking alive. It's crazy. But Especially after all the issues they had, too. Yeah, and it was very delayed. Now the game's got a lot more depth. There's a lot of, like, the EV training you can do, like you would in a real Pokemon, where there's hidden values that you have to do stuff to find out. So you get super strong. Oh, I ship. remember those. Yeah. You can't build it like you would in the original. You have you catch them that way, but there's tools to evaluate them now. Yeah. Okay. So you might catch one that's super low CP, but its uh, EV points are perfect. 
So yes, it's going to cost a shit ton to get this one up. But when you max this out versus another, this one will do more. Because it has higher attack rank or higher defense rank and stuff like that. So I remember that. It's going from what used to be like the casual phenomenon that captured the world to those who are still around are starting to get into the deep end of there is a lot of min-maxing you can do in this shit. Actually, I shouldn't mm-hmm. say min-maxing, just max-maxing. You just wait until you find <laughs> the best. Super-maxing. Yeah. Super-max. Um, but speaking <laughs> of mobile, um, I do want to bring this up. Yeah. Uh, Fortnite. Holy mm-hmm. shit, Fortnite. On iOS, at one point, it was making $2 million a day. Um, fucking crazy. Just on iOS. But um, <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Did you see what they're doing for Android, though? So for iOS, they're playing by the rules. They went through the Apple Store because, you know, you have to. Android, it's kind of a do what you want. But they have a huge Play Store. They are saying, fuck it, we're going to have people come to our site and download the game and install it from our site. They're not going to put Fortnite in the Play Store. It's That's crazy. Yeah. That's a huge revenue revenue in, in, ugh, influence too, because that's going to be just pure money for them. Basically, there's, I mean, but I mean, to me, there's no one's going to take a cut. I'm thinking of like how how many people are not going to do it because of that now, though. I mean, you have so Tom wanted me to point this out: security implications of. The fact that you're you're teaching people to just go get random APKs and install them on their phone. I'm not as worried about that because you're getting it from the trusted source. But you're going to have yeah. some kid that's handed, hey, here's the APK for Fortnite. And he installs it. And it's not the Fortnite APK. He installed it on his mom's phone. And $10,000 just went over to fucking Korea or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that, that still seems, that's like on part of the parent teaching the kid how to, you know, navigate the internet. No, no, no. That, you know? That's pretty advanced navigating, man. I mean, my my parents have no fucking clue what the hell an APK even is. I think now alone. it's more... Well, I mean, like, and I think now anyone can explain, like, you know, just don't download random stuff from the internet. You know, make sure it's from a trusted source. Well, when you're on the phone, that trusted source is the Play Store if you're on Android. That's where you go to get stuff, is the Play Store. It's true, I, but... On my current phone, I have installed one APK. Actually, I've done that in like the last decade, only one. And that was for uh, work. It was something that work installed on my phone. That I've done quite the a only bit of one. That. Remember that Pokemon Tower Defense game we played a long time ago? Oh, yeah, yeah. But that was because they couldn't put that on the Android Play Store. They did initially and right. it got pulled. Yeah, yeah. Let's not talk about copyright infringement that bad, but <laughs> that was that was blatant. I think Fortnite is big enough that I don't think them not being on the Play Store is going to be a huge deal. Yeah, I don't think so. I either. mean, it's it's a ballsy decision, but I don't think it's really going to matter that much. That's my big thing is I think they will lose revenue from it. I think in the end they will. You think it'd be better for them to put it on Play Store and lose the percentage? Yes. I think that they will lose more than 30% of players because they're not going to go download it. But they're already playing it on PC anyway. Yes, but once again, $2 million a day on (laughs) iOS, which is the smaller platform. I mean, we are Mm. talking a cash cow here. Yeah. This is absurd. It's insane how much money they make off of... Well... Do you know if that money was pure battle royale revenue, or if it came from their Save the World one as well? Save or the like World's I guess on the, yeah, iOS is yeah. just battle royale. Yeah, yeah, man, two yeah, million dollars off a completely free game on an iPhone. Per pure day. cosmetics. People love those skins. <laughs> yes, I can't believe how much people love the skins in that game. Man, I'm not gonna lie, I paid for cosmetics. Dota. I got yeah, I got a skin. Oh, I, I thought you were talking about Fortnite. Well, no, no, Fortnite now. Nah, nah, nah. Eric, have you even ever played Fortnite? Once. You played and, Fortnite? And I won. Played it once. I played with yeah. Bird, Souls, and oh, yeah. Tom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Actually, I'm back in 100. I installed it today. Oh, really? Yeah, just, just in case, because everybody else tends to play it. And... Has people been kinda... playing it much? I think it's kind of died off in the Discord. Yeah, in the 72 PC Discord, it hasn't been That's played that every, much. Yeah, every once in a while. 
it's one of those games where people are like, I don't know what to play. Blah, blah, blah. blah. I'm sick of this one game. Ah, Let's jump on a Fortnite match. You should download Warframe. Start that grind. I don't have the mental energy (laughs) for any of that. But you do for Enter the Gungeon. I mean, Enter the Gungeon is brutal. Nobody, no, you're right. You are hundreds of people have thousands of dollars on Warframe. (laughs) Yeah, fuck that. But yeah, Adam, Enter the Gungeon. You were telling me about this. What the hell did they yeah. do to that game to make it more to the masses? <laughs> well, they basically, Jeez. there's a free expansion. So they added a whole bunch of new crap. They added new items, new synergies, new rooms. I think they added more bosses and stuff. Basically just a big content upgrade. But they also made the game a little more forgiving, especially in the earlier levels. So you'll be more likely to get decent gun drops and stuff early on because the game is very difficult. It is very punishing. It's It gets to be pretty bullet hell. It gets to be pretty, you know, quick reactions and all that kind of stuff. So they did this update to kind of level it out a little bit, make it a little more accessible. It's still hard as shit. I played a round or two today. It's still hard. It's still very difficult. But they do uh, increase some of the gun drops. And I know there's there's probably a bunch of other adjustments they made. I don't know off the top of my head because I haven't gotten that far deep into the game yet to like know, you know, drop percentages or anything like that. But yeah, I know they switched some stuff around to make it easier for the uh, early game, which is good. I think I've never yeah, gotten past like the third floor of that game so far. Well, um, but you can toggle before. it off. I think this is very cool for the people who are super into the game already that don't need that help or whatever you can toggle that off in the settings menu which is good and i think making the first few floors easier will really help pull people into the game because man if you're playing a game you can't get past the first level after three hours of trying there's a good (laughs) chance you're going to put that game down and just not come back to it yeah it's not that bad but that that game's fucking hard once you start once you start getting to the second and third floors it picks up so if you don't have the the firepower to counteract that, then you're going to have a bad time. But see, it's coming from you. You have spent a fuck ton of time, more than anyone I know, in Isaac. And you got really good at Isaac. Granted, Gungeon's more bullet helly, but yeah. there's some of those skills still translate. Uh, because... Uh, I don't know, a little bit. I mean, wh- they're both kind of sort of twin stick shooters. I mean, the... The gameplay of Gungeon is a lot different, though. There's the dodge roll. There's iframes for the dodge roll. There's a lot more bullet dodging. Uh, what I was getting as like later levels, aiming. some of the higher end levels of Isaac do get bullet helly with some of the yeah. bosses. Yeah. Well, the biggest thing with Isaac, though, is you get super overpowered items and then you steamroll around. Most of the rounds I've beaten in Isaac have been easy once i got certain items up until maybe the last floor you know you see uh, i, I kind of played enough engine to see if that's the case maybe some of the guns are really really powerful and you can do that on certain runs but it seems to be a little less a little bit less dependent on rng or there's there's less difference so isaac you can have a terrible run and you basically have no chance of winning or you can get these crazy items to where everything is easy I think Gungeon is a little more narrow where you can get these good guns that make it easier, but it's not, you're not just going to steamroll everything with your eyes closed, you know? Yeah, I noticed it doesn't have, at least when I was playing, it didn't have the synergies that Isaac was. And that's what I loved about Isaac is the synergies in that fucking game. The item synergies were good. Well, it's harder to do synergies with guns because the only thing that can synergize is the passive items. True. Well, I mean, your eyes are guns in Isaac. Well, yeah, but <laughs> I'm shooting one these gun, tears, and bitches. It, and it affects what kind of bullets it shoots, and those effects can stack. But if you pick up a shotgun and then you pick up a rocket launcher, unless there's an item that you can mash them together, then yes, they kind of behave as separate entities. <laughs> yeah, I, but they I did add shoot a gun that shoots like seven rockets out. <laughs> they did add synergies in the update, which is good. Yeah, I, I'm all. By the way, the the them. update was called uh, Gungeons and Dragons. So, uh, you know, yeah, they can go to hell. I approve of this, of this, uh, this message. His name Can't is Adam Jordan, play? and he approves of this message. Yes, 
I saw um, someone playing Punch Out inside of Gungeon or something. It looked like it literally what? at some point. Um, one of the bosses straight up changed the game from a shooting game to literally playing punch out against a boss. It was nice. really weird. <laughs> it was I was like pretty confused because it was under the gungeon category, but it was definitely not a bullet hell. It was definitely punch out. Huh. I've I've went into things like that where it says it's a game, I click into it and it's like I'm not super familiar with this game, but I don't think this is that game. <laughs> <laughs> it was weird. He was fighting oh, like no. a rat. It was weird. Hmm, I've never All right, seen... Erk. I yes. looked it up. There yes. are 350 new synergies. 350? Yeah. Damn. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Erk, you need to props. buy this game and get into it so that I can also get into it. <laughs> So we can do twin runs and record them and never post them. Yeah. It yeah. Just, you know, it was fun. Isaac was fun back in the day. Still is. As I actually, every once in a while, I'll still boot that up. Like if I'm... Yeah. It used to be a game I'd play alongside Battleground because I would die early and my team wouldn't. So then I'd play, <laughs> oh, I'd no. play Isaac during the down times. Yeah, I was, I was that terrible, terrible player. Um, But... That's good. I know that, um, do, 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 holy shit, what the fuck was I saying? Sorry. Um, other games that I always come back to, and I think all of us do, and Souls miss this, it sounds like. Rocket League? They had a new map for a while? No, he didn't I played the map. I oh, okay, you were there. Okay. Yeah. I so, love that map. Yes. Uh, what'd you think, Adam? It was a lot of fun. Um, um Yeah. I'd be curious to play more of it without the because they did the different ball weight. Was it ball ball weight was oh, lower? It yeah. was. So it felt kind of floaty, but it, it would, was. I'm, yeah. I'm curious to play it uh, more with the regular physics and stuff. I will, but it's not in it's not in like the online rotation. So yeah, I was gonna say it's gone now, right? It's its own like, mode. Well, you private matches and well, I think the playlist for the map is gone completely. Yeah, now. the playlist is gone. When they dropped that. So, the 29 um, oh okay so it was recent they dropped it yeah but yeah, i it was good though i enjoyed the shit out of it it forced more open field passing and yeah in my mm -hmm. ranks it was you could see who knew how to do it and who didn't because there's yeah. certain people that yeah. just couldn't pass so they would still try to just call the ball at the corner like you yeah. can in the regular match. oh my god it got stuck in the corner so much more but people mm -hmm. who didn't know how to play Mm -hmm. Well, and you would get the battles behind the fucking net. And like the yep. ball would be stuck behind the net for a good 15 seconds. You're like, where is it going? <laughs> that's actually what I did to stall time is once you get it there, it's pretty hard to, to, it's pretty hard for somebody else to come and take it away. Like I could get it stuck behind the net for like a solid minute and a half and just kill time. Well, if it's behind it your net, free. yes. Yeah. Because Both they, nets, I would well, just stall it. If it's behind your net, they can't boom it. That's the beauty. Because if they boom it, oh, they're booming mean, it at their own net. So if you can stall out there because you, they have to do a really delicate touch to make it worth a damn otherwise. Yeah, yeah, I get what you mean. I get what you mean. I guess just for me, I just I was able to just keep it in. I just kept it behind the net. If we were in the lead or anything, I would just keep it there. I would just take it back. No matter what, if the ball went near our net or their net, I would just take it behind the net and keep it there for like 30 seconds. <laughs> just stall time over and over. My entire objective in that was I'm getting the ball to the back, getting it behind the net, and we are going to do sweet fucking passes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was, yeah. There were some really fun play opportunities for that map. Oh, yeah. I think that's why it's my favorite. It's, it's like my favorite way to play Rocket League in forever. So I know people shit on the idea of unstandard maps and the uh, rotation for unranked and ranked, but yeah. man, they need to get lab matches back into social because those things are fun. I like irregular maps. I feel I like, like it's should be in the normal rotation. Like That's I feel I mean. like standard, yeah. but yeah. the a Rocket League's map rotation would be okay. Rocket Labs. Yeah, I think they went pretty crazy with the old Rocket Labs maps. Yeah. They tried to experiment with changing the maps, but keeping them pretty still standard. So you could play with the ceiling height. You could play with the width or the length of the, the field. 
the way they did the goals and stadium, you know, it's still, it was still pretty much the, the regular field, but it was a little longer and keep the know, shape the, and fuck with elevation. Yeah. Yeah. We'll just make the changes, I guess, more subtle. I don't well, know how to describe it, but well, like you had underpass, the, had, which was kind of a, was, uh, would you say yes or no for underpass? Um, that might have been a little much too because of the side. It didn't. The side ramps didn't add that much to the gameplay. It didn't add that much to the strategy. It just made it harder to navigate the map. Okay, I like what the a, boost behind the net though, or on above the net, driving yeah, like over the yeah. net. I kind of liked that. What about the uh, the indent one? There was one that was also still over you ovular. Um, oh. and, it had, and it was in cosmic. Yes. What did you think of that one? Talking about wasteland. Oh, cosmic, cosmic. Okay, cosmic was all right. It was still a little too different, I think. I think they just played played with the overall size of the map. I guess what I'm what I'm getting at is there needs to be there needs to be a way that the map is supposed to be played before they design the map. Like, there's got to be. It needs to encourage this play style a little bit by the design of the map. Yeah, I get you. Don't make a map and then figure out how to what to do on it. Know what you want someone to do and then make the map for yeah. it. Yeah, right. Like you want one and with sweet it... aerial shots, have like weird curlies up to the ceiling a lot or something. Yeah, just make it a little different. Like not all baseball diamonds are the same, right? Or don't they vary some field to field? Uh, depth wise only. Okay, stuff like that. Make a bigger field. Make one that's kind of cramped. Make one that's really wide. Super wide. Know. But what did you think of this one? It was fun. I liked it. Do you like the normal maps more? Or do you yeah. like, you still like normal still, maps more? I like the normal maps more, but this was a fun change of pace. Yeah, I think I, think I like the new map more than the normal maps. I think I, it got to the point after playing for a while, I had way more fun playing on the new map that I I was kind of dissuaded from even playing normal Rocket League without playing on the new map. <laughs> I really like the new one. It was I a good change of awesome. pace for sure. But I missed the backboard rebounds. Yeah, you could you can't get double touches and stuff like well you could, but you yeah, have to be a god. It'd be more difficult. Throw it off the post. I, well, and... I think with normal physics it'd be easier to bang it off the backboard and still make it in front of the net. Yeah, but you'd have but to do the, a banger from the box pretty much to do it. Yeah. Bigger from the box is the name of my next album. Banger <laughs> from the box. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Uh, but other stuff. Souls. Looks like you're getting ready for Kingdom Hearts 3. Absolutely. I'm <laughs> so ready for Kingdom Hearts 3. It's been so many years, man. I remember when Kingdom Hearts 2 came out and like they ended it with the obviously with the connotation that there is going to be another one and now we're three generations of consoles behind or three three generations of console ahead it would be like the playstation 3 playstation 4 and then playstation 4 pro if you consider the pro a new generation yeah is, i got gotcha. you it's like kind of half generation. It's, it's 2.5 yeah exactly it's just like the names of all the kingdom hearts games uh, oh kingdom god hearts 2. 395 HD, eight times the two recoded. divided by five yeah, exactly oh ascii god, values of 589 <laughs> yeah man the one thing i found out about playing i i got the collection of kingdom hearts on the playstation 4 pro which comes with the the important game the important games um, which I would argue there's only two important games because all the other ones were really bad in terms of gameplay. What Although is- it was sad because, you know, the gameplay for Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2 is super fun. The story is so vague and unfilled that you have to play the supplementary games. And the there was one game called Chain of Memories, I think. I don't even remember the name. I think it might have been that. Again, all the names are so whack. Um, <laughs> so I heard that it was while. it was a card game. It was really bad, but it had easily the best story of all the games. And so it got to the point where I literally didn't even want to beat the game because the gameplay was so awful. Like it was one of those games where like 
it would be one of the games where back in the day, if you had bought this game, you would have returned it to GameStop the next day. Like <laughs> literally, it was that bad. Um, but the story filled in so much information about the the world of Kingdom Hearts and the characters and all this stuff was super good. And there was the other one called Birth by Sleep, which is kind of the same way. The story for it is pretty cool-ish so far. And the gameplay is just awful. It's just bad. Um, only one and two really have good gameplay still. So 2.5, wasn't that supposed to be two with filling in the story? 2.5 um, is, is still just two. Um, they added a couple of extra bosses. 2.5 is, oh. again, the naming convention is not good. Okay. Um, but uh, uh, the other one, uh, which I see in chat, the Kingdom Hearts 365 by two days or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that's always the one I mock because of that name is stupid. <laughs> it's really bad. Um, that story, actually, that's not even... A, apparently, that was a, a Game Boy game where you just kind of fought waves of enemies. I don't really know how it worked. But in the collection... What they did was they just took all the cutscenes, remastered them, and threw them together in a four-hour movie that you have to watch. <laughs> it's four hours of cutscenes. Holy shit. Um, right, so... Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> and that was a DS game, I think? I don't remember. I just know it was a mobile game. Um, but yeah, that was... Uh, that was... Uh, one of two movies they put in the game. There's, there's 365 by 2... Which is just four hours of cutscenes. And then there's one. I watched it by the way. It wasn't half bad. It wasn't awful. Um, they the only thing I didn't like about the story for that was they they wrote story and then immediately erased it by the end of the of the game. There was only one character story. There was only one character arc from that game that actually mattered. Which was kind of weird. Um everything else is just know. tangential bullshit that you could throw away. Pretty much, yeah. Um, it explained the, here's the thing. It was four hours to get the thoughts of one character that transferred over to Kingdom Hearts 2. And that was about it. And the characters whose thoughts transferred or whose story transferred over to Kingdom Hearts 2 shared probably like maybe an hour of the four hours of screen time. He wasn't even the main character of 365 by two days. All the other characters are kind of throwaway. Axel's character. Yep. Axel was the one character who stayed who you learn why he does things in the second game. Axel Rose. Axel. I don't no, know if Axel that was last from name. Twisted Metal. <laughs> it's actually a uh, Axel is uh Knuckles from Sonic. <laughs> if you see him. Oh so, yeah, the uh, redhead and yep. all that. <laughs> but yeah. Um I'm super excited for Kingdom Hearts 3 because you know, it's been so long and the graphics for Kingdom Hearts 3 are kind of ridiculous looking. Like there has been a, there is a comparison video between the actual movie Frozen and the now real time rendered version of Frozen, and there is very little difference. Really, they like very little difference in my eyes. There's I mean like it's it's noticeable difference. I'll say that it's noticeable difference, but it's very little. Hmm. So I'm very excited to play. Kingdom Hearts 3. I'm very excited. And it actually has a date now. So it it's, it's actually happening. It's happening. It, maybe. It's happening. Maybe. <laughs> you throw a maybe at the end of it. It's still Square Enix. They can do whatever they want, man. You know, yeah. it's, it's going to be uh, three, the last ever 3DS game. They're going to put it and bury it there. So everyone has to go <laughs> buy fucking 3DSs. <laughs> or even worse, uh, it'll be a fucking Vita game. Oh, God. Does that still exist? They don't support I, that anymore, right? I think they still do. I'm pretty sure they're still Ew. making games, just not much. They're crazy. Oh, they are. But, I mean, the Switch came out, and the Switch is everything they wanted out of the Vita. Yeah, so sure. They're vindicated that the idea works, but they just didn't get it. I, wonder, I don't remember why I failed. Was it the price, or was it just too early? Um, hmm. I don't know. It was because it was PlayStation, and no one goes to PlayStation for portable. That's true. Where Nintendo, I don't know. I guess Nintendo so, yeah. is using it as their actual primary console too, which helps. Like if Sony was to say we're not making a PS4, we're making a handheld, it would have sold more. 
I think people would have been absolutely enraged. But if, yeah, <laughs> but if they would have made it like a portable console kind of thing, like the Switch, yeah, people would be pissed because they can't get the power they're used to out of the PlayStation. But it would have mm-hmm. sold a fuck ton more than the Vita did, Probably. because it's your only PlayStation console. That's where That's you're going true. for your Uncharted's, your Last of Us, and then really, is there anything else? Oh yeah, Horizon Zero Dawn. Duh. But yeah, so Kingdom Hearts finally happening. That series yes. finally, finally going to conclude. Suppose conclusion is a strong word. <laughs> yeah. Cliffhanger at the end. I thought yeah. it was supposed to be the finale of the Kyrie story or whatever. Uh, I don't know. Probably, it's probably. I think I've heard that rumor too, but I doubt it. I'm going to throw a big, uh, a big doubt in there. X to doubt for me, boys. But you're also going through an older series. Another yes. One. Another another revived old series with a new one coming out in a couple, couple months. But I would say this one probably had more mainline success than Kingdom Hearts. Really? I don't know. I would, uh, I would, I would say no to maybe? that. I they know a lot more people that have played Devil May Cry. Oh, are we, are we talking about pure people who have played it or actual good games, though? Oh, no, successful th- games. I'm talking like uh, commercial success, not, not good. Hmm, but just commercial success because that will make cry being multi-platform and out on newer gens multi-platform i think really helped pretty sure it wasn't just xbox when it came out because it was also some on playstation i thought it was I just thought. playstation when it came out uh, i think Devil it transferred to xbox Devil may cry it four. was a capcom game four came out on xbox i remember yeah four definitely came out on xbox the first ones were probably i think the first ones were only playstation well because i don't think there was a xbox I think it came out on PlayStation 2. I don't remember, well, actually. I'd have to look up all these dates. Either way, I would bargain to say Devil May Cry series has been played by more people than the Kingdom Hearts. I'm not saying they're better. I'm not saying that. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I'm, yeah, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Honestly, I would say uh, Kingdom Hearts as a whole. I would totally say Kingdom Hearts as a whole is a better series of games than Devil May Cry. Because Devil May Cry had some not great games to... Two not great games, depending on how you look at it. But I've been I've been enjoying Devil May Cry again. Those games are just pure, just pure adrenaline. You know, just enemies everywhere, hitting combos, throwing people into walls and into air, shooting guns at people. I'm pretty sure Devil May Cry was the first one to implement dual wielding guns as part of a combo system with swords. Like, is there another game that did that before? I don't know. Like swords um, and the- dual wielding. Yeah. Here's here's a here's a fun fact. I'm ready. What you got? Devil May Cry was originally intended to be a sequel to Resident Evil. Oh, that's right. What? The main character was supposed to be Chris from Resident Evil, I believe. So he was going to be going around with pistols and swords slaying zombies instead or I... was uh Resident Evil going to turn into a uh demon thing and not be the virus X or whatever it was? I don't know if there was that much information. I think it was just... I think the director said that it was originally supposed to be the next Resident Evil. I could be wrong. I, I think w- during development, they initially were just like, eh, nope. Yeah, they just switched. Also, I didn't, I didn't realize that one of the developers was Ninja Theory. Mm-hmm. The people behind... Uh, Ninja Gaiden. Hellblade. No, not Ninja they- Theory. Sorry, I'm thinking... Yeah, Team Ninja, sorry. Um, They only did the first game, I believe. Oh, or, no, 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 I'm sorry. Um, Platinum, I think, the people who made Bayonetta and all those games mm. um, made the first Devil May Cry, and then they threw it off to Ninja Theory, who made the second DMC, which was mm. awful. It was so <laughs> bad. The second Devil May Cry game is not a good, not a fun game. You want to talk about dreary, awful color palettes? That game is brown. And brown, dark gray. brown. No, it's brown and dark brown. <laughs> brown on brown on brown. Of, you, you throw some brown red in there, some maroon, and that's the color palette of Devil May Cry 2. Yeah, that gets and, old on uh, the eyes real quick. It's, ew, oh man, that game. Um, it's, it's rough. It's, I, the, there's a huge stigma to uh, Devil May Cry 2 and the Devil May Cry, like, sort of community thing. Um, 
a lot of people make it sound worse than it is. I'm I'm obviously making it sound pretty bad. It's <laughs> bad. But some people are like that this some people like straight up like don't even see that game, you know? They're like, oh yeah, I love Devil May Cry one, three, and four. There's a second <laughs> one. <laughs> you know, they they just completely erase that from their memory. Isn't that weird how they just numbered their games that way without a two they just yeah. skip two all together that's strange. i don't know <laughs> this was a two like the roman numeral two i don't remember <laughs> it was just that it was not a good game all the other ones though are really fun and there's the other one there's devil may cry one through four which are chronological canon games um with uh, story, which is a really weird order. I believe the story for Double May Cry is Double May Cry 3, 3, 1, 4, 2. It's 3, 1, 4, 2 in that order, like chronological. It's really weird. That's fucking stupid. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's weird. Um, and then there's DMC, which is Devil May Cry, but it's just titled DMC, which came out recently even on the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 and oh, PC. Yeah. And um, that is kind of like an alternate universe sort of... It's, it was a reboot. But then here's the weird thing. They announced Devil May Cry 5 at E3, but that's taking part after Devil May Cry 2, like the actual numbered <laughs> series. So it so, goes 1, 3, 4, 2, 5. It, three one oh, four three, two one. five. Oh my god. Three one four two uh, five. <laughs> it's rough. Um someone please tell them how to fucking count. <laughs> dude, this is, I tell you, you got also Kingdom Hearts with ridiculous ordering too. Kingdom Hearts has weird ordering. Yeah, but at least they're say, not numbering their games that way. They I have mean, I don't know. I guess, yeah. It's weird. I mean, if you're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the order should probably be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Just, Kingdom just throwing it out like there. that either, though. Uh, Star Kingdom Wars Hearts doesn't is... do it that way. Yeah, they do. Episode 1, Episode 2, Episode 3, Episode 4, Episode 5. Oh, I guess they released it. They released them differently, but they're numbered yeah. that way. Yeah, I guess that makes, <laughs> that makes sense. Like, call it what it fucking is, is my big issue. <laughs> Yeah, well, I think the part with the Devil May Cry thing was that they didn't really know where to go with the game because 2 was just ended up being bad. And uh, 3 was kind of where a lot of character development, I think, for the for the main character, Dante, of course. Yeah. The, uh, the main Devil Brothers, Dante and Virgil, is where Virgil and Dante first... You even... That's the first time you get to see both of them even interacting, really. Because you don't see them interacting in the first or second game. You definitely don't see them in the second game. Um, as a matter of fact, who has a complete throwaway character that you never see again? Um, <laughs> so I don't know what happened to her. She's just gone. Um, there's a lot of weird things. Actually, even DMC has, again, alternate universe sort of thing, has a, a throwaway character that they just kind of wrote in. Never, She never even appeared in the numbered games. Weird things, weird things, but good games. Um, good gameplay, I will say. Devil May Cry 3 and 4 have a have a really weird thing where halfway through the story, you just backtrack. That's, that's half of the game as you go through levels you've already played, mm. which I don't like. A lot of people didn't like. Yeah. I find Especially, that annoying. Backtracking has to be done a uh, certain... It's got to be done Back the right way. It wasn't done the right way in three or four because in four you literally literally go back and fight the same bosses, fight the same enemies oh, in the exact same man. areas, just, just backwards. Just That's back just it was lazy. Straight up lazy. It, that is it was lazy. lazy. Shit. It was fully lazy. Um, Devil May Cry three did it slightly different, where it mixed up the rooms that you go through. Just they're the same rooms. Um, but mm. the thing with Devil May Cry three is that that game also had a color palette of, of a gray. <laughs> and uh mm. slightly off colors of gray uh, and brown and red um the blood. And red <laughs> so yeah fun fun games and i cannot wait for five because i hope that i i just hope it's good like best of all worlds yeah i hope so i hope they learned from all 
the the five games they've made previously. You know. Yeah, but they never do. It's Capcom. Some, Capcom. Some of them do. Yeah, some Resident, of them do. The new Resident Evil was excellent. Okay. Speaking of which, it's running on that engine. Devil May Cry Five is running on the RE engine. Oh, is it? Nice. Yeah. So it looks good. Man, I, I really want to do that VR just to see it. Why? Why we mentioned Resident Evil? Did you guys see the gameplay for the Resident Evil Two remake? Oh yes, no. it looks so good. Eric, you need to watch really this. Good. It looks really good. I've heard a lot of good There's stuff. A lot of it. It looks so good. That comes out in January. It looks so claustrophobic. It? Yeah, I think it does. I remember that, the, or I did read that they said that they plan on doing another remake after two. Oh really? Yes. I'd bet it's three. I'd bet they'd go straight guess, to Resident Evil yeah, Three. Probably. I, I don't know. Three. After two, the next Resident Evil comes to my head is four. There's yeah. no way they'd make four. There's Maybe no way they'd they make... might remaster four. I wouldn't. People I don't already know, did that. Remaking them, though. four, although the camera and gameplay style of the two remake is kind of similar to four with the over-the-shoulder camera and stuff. Yeah, instead of fixed. Oh, they're not. They're not doing the fixed cameras. No. No. Ooh, that nope. that 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 alone changes the feel of that game. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's a it's a different game. It's going to be a completely different game set in the universe of Resident Evil 2. It's not mm-hmm. going to be. Well, I mean, it's still you're still playing through Resident Evil 2. Just, you know. No, I not. guess that's true. Yeah. I, that mean, like, story now? I never did play 2 all the way. There's like. I played a demo or something. There's a lot of different ways to play through 2, right? I've never played through 2 either, but I think there's like three characters you can play as or something like that. All I remember about 2 is two. finding the fucking. Okay. Uh, the. the strips for the typewriter to save yeah. and um having liquor scare the shit out of me because a fucking window's breaking <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. get ready for the get ready for the remake then yeah that's <laughs> all i remember gonna, i'm gonna find that trailer and send it to you and it's, something it's about good. being on the roof with a crashed helicopter and some psycho i think that was two was that two um i th- i think that, that was, was two that was three nemesis it was three. Yeah, I was thinking that sounds like Nemesis. It wasn't at the end. It wasn't like a final boss. Huh. But either way, Resident Evil, that will be interesting. Yes, it looks good. And, uh, you know, you just, again, you just kind of hope that they take what they learned from their old games and make it better. <laughs> I just like the fact that they're changing formulas. Like, Seven was a change of formula. Doing two without a fixed camera. It's a whole new game now. Mm-hmm. It's going to be awesome. But, you know, a formula that does work? Hitting shit in a rhythm. Pythagorean. Oh. No, Pythagorean always works. Yes. Okay. But when a blue box comes, you hit it. When a red box comes, you hit it. And then now mm. you give yourself a lightsaber. And you slice those boxes. I see. In VR. Oh, I saw footage of that a long time ago. That looked like a lot of fun. Yeah, we, uh, my buddy Matt was persistent that I bought this game and I never (laughs) bought it, so he got it for me. Um, (laughs) fuck that game is good. Fuck that game is good. (laughs) Glad you like it. That's all I can say is this game is excellent. It is the best rhythm game I have played. All right. It's more enjoyable than, it's more enjoyable than any rhythm game I've ever played. Because it's full body, like the thriller. There, okay, you have to get this mod for it so you can get all these open charts. Because the game nat- mm. natively only has 12 charts, I think. Mm. Different difficulties. But like there's a thriller chart where you're literally doing the thriller dance because what they're making you do in the game. That is fucking huh. awesome. Yeah, it's, that's you have, cool. You have to duck because the blocks, these blocks come at you and they have arrows on them to tell you which way you have to slice them. So you have to slice through the air. So if the air's at the top, you have to slice down and through. So you have mm-hmm. to get your body in position to be able to do this while dodging these red walls so you don't die. So they do this mechanic to make you actually dance a little bit on the Thriller one, which mm, is really clever. That's cool. I like that. <laughs> Man, I wish I had VR for that game. As you know, I, I love so rhythm good. games. So yeah, yeah. You're, you're a rhythm guy. I figured you might have objection to what I said. But it's fantastic. It, it got me to dust the Vive back off and put it back on the head. Uh, Gene and I went at that for a few hours. And I will say this. It's a fucking workout playing that game. I had the headset <laughs> drenched. Oh, God. 
Be afraid to put it on after somebody else played it then? If I played it, yes, because I sweat like a stuck pig when I do things. <laughs> it's just what I do. How many charts did you have? Do you play like all the charts? Okay, here's the thing. Do you play songs you like or do you just download chart after chart and just hope they're good? Um, I was downloading a shit ton of charts. I haven't played through them all. Okay. Because there's the a huge list. you haven't heard of or also no, no. recognize? Stuff I oh. recognize, but there was like remix and stuff. Like there's a Get Swifty mm. remix, of course, because I'm a Rick and Morty fucking nerd. <laughs> uh, there's like some Zelda stuff and then like metal, metal Zelda stuff. Hmm. It was really good. How many Japanese songs are they? <laughs> I didn't see a whole lot. And I'll tell I'm you like, why. I don't know how widespread Vive is over there. Oh, see, the we're, thing we're is... We're talking really, a different market than a lot of the rhythm games you play, I think. That's yeah, that's true. true. That's very true. Um, most people who even make charts are like the people who... They always seem to be for this different games, similar people. Like I know people who make charts for like OS and for like Step Mania, DDR, in the all those games. Similar mm -hmm. people who make them. So I always figured that it was like just the people over there from like Japan making all of the charts for every game ever. No, I mean some of those. Which probably classical? Are, but... What popular classical piece can we speed up and put a dance beat behind? <laughs> <laughs> I hate those. There you that's go. my. That's my. <laughs> those are the worst. Yeah. Oh, and um, she brought it up. There was also Aladdin. There was um, nice. friend like me. That was actually really oh, kind of fun because all the sound <laughs> effects you were doing certain things through. Oh, and... But no, if just you feel like a badass, especially like electronic dance music works great for this kind of stuff. But yeah. the feeling of slicing these things through with the rhythm and it's like. The first time I did, I couldn't help but smile a little bit. It's like, okay, it, this is good. This is good. This is satisfying. It's getting my heart going. Yeah, it's like, this what is going to work. What difficulty were you playing on? Um, so I am a competitive guy. Mm -hmm. And my buddy who's got this is pretty good at it. So he does stuff mm -hmm. on expert. So mm -hmm. I have been trying to run through on expert. Okay, I was going to say, any music rhythm game snob will tell you that you're not playing a rhythm game unless you're playing it on expert difficulty or whatever yeah. the hardest difficulty is. Yeah, and I will say some of these charts I can't do on expert even to start. Like, I mean, I can't get through the first 10 seconds of them because it's just intense mm -hmm. Yeah, to where I'm going to have well, to like, dial it down a little bit to get used to it. Yeah, at a certain point, it comes more down to not really even playing Beat Saber from moving your arms and all this stuff to, like, minimizing your movements for, like, every hit it's not as much yeah. like hitting things like this and that it's like sitting here you're like kind of well, wiggling your arms <laughs> they, they, they do a little thing for that you have to hit it with enough force to break it oh really yes nice mm. that's good that's so good. you can't cheese the game you actually have to have momentum when you make contact nice huh. so yeah, that's, that's you'll see then. some that come really quick but it'll be up down up down so you're like slicing up and down constantly yeah and like they'll do stuff where like you side they'll have you so you're sidestepping so your step will actually get you the momentum mm. it's it's a game that requires room scale to a degree you have to have room yeah, that's cool the, yeah it's it's fucking it's good I, i'll just leave it at that it's good how does it feel with it coming at you like do you get any sort of sickness like a lot of movement in vr is still kind of rough not for this kind because it's relative movements so okay. games that bother me in vr are like there's climbing games where all of a sudden you slip and you fall your character's moving but you're not here the movement is mapped one-to-one -one with you so you don't get this out of body stomach churning experience mm. that's where people have issues is locomotion in uh, vr games is because when you're moving the character without you physically moving there's a disassociation that occurs and it's really a mind fuck and makes you get nausea. So this game, since it's a one-to-one -one mapping, you don't have that as much. Okay. I've not heard of someone getting motion sickness to this. That said, if you're prone to motion sickness, I would put money on most any VR experience would fuck you up. That's true. But yeah, yeah. it's 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 fine. It, it's right there with labs for polish for me. It's really well polished. But Is there a way to play it without VR? No, 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 no. Uh, I mean, unless you maybe, maybe there would be a tablet adaptation of it. That'd be the only thing I could see. Because you, you, need, you need the swipes. to a PC? Um, 
so the tracking, I don't know how well the tracking would be because then you'd have to be aiming the Wiimotes while you slice. That'd make it so fucking hard. It would be doable. What if you, can you hook up the Switch controllers to a PC? Um, like there's, the there's pe- thingies. I don't know about the none or those, but I know people are doing Wiimotes. They do have Wiimotes okay. to, but I'm just saying like with the VR, it tracks your position XYZ wise. Where okay. with the uh, nunchucks and stuff, it would be harder for it to do that. And it would, you would actually have to start oh. aiming it while you swiped, which is interesting. be kind of fun, though. Hmm. Yeah, figuring this stuff out. So, I'm, I'm excited that there's another rhythm game on the market with different mechanics. Because, you know, that evolves every game that comes out after it, hopefully. Yes. Yeah. Well, it was very, der- I don't want to say derivative, but I think it is of Audio Shield, which was uh, one of the earlier VR yeah, games where you were essentially p- punching the blocks. Like they would come, you put your shield in the way, and they would count. Where I now mean, it's like- more advanced. So, yeah, it's definitely, you could see the VR games are building on themselves in a really fun way. That's cool. So, um, any of you guys got any more games? That we maybe brushed over. So I don't have anything really? else noticeable. Um, yeah, there's, not that I can... there's one game I do want to call out that I'll probably be playing again here shortly. I know Souls will be playing shortly for the oh, first time. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yes. Um, Almost forgot to bring it up. So we've been doing our news kind of through this. Uh, there's some other stuff that happened. It gets kind of political. Not sure we want to talk about. But Monster Hunter World. PC, August 9th. Fully hyped. The hype meter's up hey. here. Wait, now you can't see it. It's off the camera screen. It's up here. Off the charts. So those of you who do not like to grind shall not apply. This game is not for you. This is a grindhouse game, and it is fucking <laughs> awesome. <laughs> who doesn't love hunting dinosaurs? Like, if there's anything to grind for, it should be hunting down massive creatures. And the beautiful thing about this game is, let's say I get it a month ahead of you, and I get so far ahead. All I have to do to play with you and make it feel normal is just go use your gear. Your character has no leveling ability to it, so it's all based off mm, the that's gear. That's cool. So I've, that's like, I've never played this game. You have. What yes. if I didn't switch to, let's say you, I, you, I played a month ahead of you and you join. I want to play with you. And I use my own gear. Can I just like power level you? Or does it make you switch gear? Um, you could. You absolutely okay. could. You could help me. But... The game is designed to where you kill a monster, it drops things. But by attacking it with certain weapons in certain ways, you can get them to drop things before they're even dead. Oh, that's like Dark Souls. Oh my God, another game copied Dark Souls. This is so good. Can I meet him? (laughs) Can I fucking meet him? But no, um, like if you're hitting um, a dinosaur in the mouth with a hammer, it's prone to drop its teeth. If you're using that's a slicing cool. weapon yeah, on its tail. that's kind of what happens when you swing a giant hammer at something, generally. <laughs> so, you hit the mouth, some teeth are sure to follow. I'm typically a, like, twin sword, single fast sword kind of guy. But I used mm-hmm. the big-ass slow hammer for the first time when I was playing that game. The yeah. first time I connected with the T-Rex's head, and it's just thud. And I was like, oh, my God, that <laughs> felt so good. <laughs> it was so satisfying. That's... Yeah. I, I agree. I'm like you. Yeah, I'm usually the fast sword kind of weapon first, but I can that, see how that would be satisfying. It's like when an RTS or a first person shooter really gets that thud of when you make contact with the mm-hmm. sword. It was that with this hammer. I was like, oh, yeah, I found my weapon. And there's that's a cool. Huge amount of weapons. Uh, well, I shouldn't say huge. Um, you have 16, 14 variant or different types of weapons. And each one has variants underneath it. You can craft them into elemental damage, different shit. Did any of the weapons come with DLC or are they all in launch? All launch. Or did they all launch? Okay. All launch. The the thing with this version is they, it is a, it is a slightly gutted version of the console version. They specifically took out some content so that way they could get it to PC faster. Um, Hmm. That they're going to be re-adding to PC, uh, trying to get it up to console parity, I believe. But they specifically wanted to get the game out on PC, so they took out some console stuff. And this not game, not important stuff, but some stuff. This game's designed in a way though that'll keep people playing on the PC for a while. You'll stop playing it for a week or two. All of a sudden, a new deal or new monster comes in. You'll go grind him out, get his weapons. Or speaking of new monsters, 
Oh, yes. Have you seen the Final Fantasy Behemoth? Yes. I am so happy that this exists because the Behemoth is such a cool monster. An iconic monster. To be able to hunt that in a Monster Hunter game, super hype. Awesome. Um, it's going to be fantastic. And the size of these monsters, the first time you see them. Like there's some, you're like, oh, it's kind of big, kind of big. And then you get to like some of the big ones. And you're like, holy shit. That's I love scale in games. I, I think I remember yeah. when I was on last year, a while ago when I was talking about Final Fantasy 15, and I'm talking about how you're fighting a person who's literally holding up a comet, like a literal meteor on his back <laughs> while he's fighting you. He's just like he just has it on here and he's just like waving at you with his arm, and you're like the size of his like half the size of his thumbnail. And you beat him. Oh yeah, you do. You beat him so much that he becomes your teammate. That's but pretty yeah, good. That it's coming out. Um, this is one of the rare occasions where I might end up buying a game twice. Mm. Because I might I need end all up the people to play with jumping to PC just because I know Souls will have it, Josh will have it, Bivens will have it. There's gonna be a lot of people <laughs> that get it. And I'll be playing. Discord will be bustling with Monster Hunter. Yes. Yep. So if you're interested in Monster be... Hunter, jump into our Discord. There will be yes. fuckers playing. What is the party yeah. size for it? So, uh, is it like four people, six, eight? Okay, so rewind about seven months and you'll hear me griping about how the fuck they don't understand how to make a good online system. Mm-hmm. You have a overworld that you can bring people in, which is like 16, but your party yes. size is four. It's yeah, a weird so concept, but you have this hmm. overworld where everyone get into and everyone go out and do their own things. And then you go to the quest board, you can see people in your overworld's quest and you can join them. Mm. so it's weird that's it's, that sounds kind of cool though because like then it's instead of breaking parties all the time like like a, in destiny right no matter what you can only have six of your friends in a party with you but if you can have 16 people that maybe you you know even if you're doing different things in an overworld sounds better than yes. having them in a totally diff- different instance that sounds cool yeah but the issue is their implementation on how the parties break out because even though you have this overworld idea, it's not as easy to get people into your game. It is your uh, first time you do this. It is going to be so counterintuitive. You are going to look up how to do it. All right. You ready? will look up how to play with someone. Okay. This is, see, Google is just, this is the reason why Google is at the top of everything, you know? This because why... game designers <laughs> digress 15 years when designing an <laughs> online <laughs> fucking game. I mean, it's like Nintendo made this fucking game or something. Speaking of Nintendo, oh no, it's it's bad, man. It, it's really bad. It's possibly one of the worst multiplayer um, implementations I've seen in a while. Once you're in together, it's Damn. fine. The net code, yeah, I was perfect. gonna ask that. Okay, cool. yeah, you, once people are in, you'll be great. Uh, the monsters cool. scale, which is nice. With uh, how many people are in your party? Yes, off a Do number, they- not gear. Okay, that's what I was going to ask. Is there any scaling on gear whatsoever? No, because you'll actually end up going into lower level monsters and grinding them out for certain things sometimes. So something that might take you 25, 30 minutes chasing them all over the fucking map to kill, you'll come back later and kill them in two minutes. Okay. Mm. Because you know what you're doing is a big end of it, but you also have better gear. So you'll be able to stand in and tank and do more damage and blah, blah, blah. Is the uh, is the loot scaled or shared slash like? So when um, an, when a monster is killed, that is shared, and when the monster drops certain things, it's shared. I don't know if I hit it in the mouth and knock out a tooth. If everyone sees that tooth, though, so if you pick up the tooth, I can't pick up the tooth. I don't know if you see the tooth. Oh, okay. Yeah, but, but everything the- visible is shared. So I'm not stealing okay. something that you have a chance to get. So you're never competing over loot. Let me put it that okay. way. You're never competing okay. over loot. So it's like, That's good. It's like Borderlands-y where everyone, it all drops for different. Yes, but like, let's say this monster die or dies and we're all carving it. All five of us made up a different shit after the carve. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's like, yeah, it's completely random when it comes to that. Or, that doesn't like Borderlands, Never mind. But that said, that's going to be awesome. Come join the Discord. Have fun with it. Absolutely. There is one more thing in news I do want to bring up. Because it's funny. It's really funny. (laughs) 
Guess what the top selling console of June was? Sega Saturn. I just looked, I just looked at <laughs> well, that's a perfect pick. Great pick. I just looked at the show notes so that I can't. Guess. I would have never guessed it. But I can guess something that it isn't. The Super NES? Uh, Dreamcast. Ah, damn. No. Close, though. Ah. It's, close. Oh. It's, it's the NES. Where are all the Sega consoles? The fucking NES Classic was the top selling console in June. That's crazy. Damn. Um, I actually just switched buildings at work and walking around the floor, this team area had like cleared out the first part, had a TV, two couches, and an NES Classic hooked up to it. That's cool. And I'm like, oh. People love their old games. Yeah. Old games were good. I have, I've still never touched one. Damn good. Yeah. I got to get my hands on one just to check it out. But with that, y'all, I think that's, that's kind of a wrap. Is that it? All right. I, think, I think that's it. Are you? Yeah, are you are you are you guys thing. good? You guys good? Can we, um, can we call born, this a, I was born good. <laughs> can we call it? Can we call this a thing? Is this a thing? It's called a thing. I it's guess we can call it a thing. Hey, it's a thing. That's a good, good thing. It's so a thing now. Let me do this thing, and then uh, we'll get on with our things. Uh, so, just so everyone knows, this is the first Saturday of every month. Is a new time frame for the seventy two PC podcast. Um, busy lives, change schedule. So come catch us at that point. If you're over on our YouTube, speaking of, if you're watching this live, we have a YouTube look up 72 pin connector on YouTube. You'll see a lot of old content. Uh, hopefully at some point we'll get some new content up there, but you'll see a lot of old content. It's still fun. Go see it. It's still good content. It's still good content. Um, and the person below me, dark soul invader, he has, has me. A, he has a Twitch. I do. Everyone should go see his Twitch souls. How do they find your Twitch? You can find me on twitch.tv forward slash Dark Soul Invaders, spelled exactly the way it is below Eric's name. He plays all sorts of random shit. Go check it Absolutely. out. Absolutely. All it's a very sorts. diverse cata- catalog. Yeah. So if you want there to check out stuff, problem. go to him. And also new games. A lot of new games. Mm. I've seen you play a lot of games before I've ever got my hands on them. So. And he's just like ridiculously good at all of them. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> the dude's a god. I've watched him on fucking um damn it the uh, EA shooter two, the second one. The uh, big mechs. Oh Titanfall too. Titanfall, yeah. Titanfall. I've I've watched him on Titanfall too. That's because I I'm, actively tried to be good at that game though. And I'm glad I've never I, I, played that against I, you. <laughs> that game is so that's that's the type of game, you know, it's fast paced and it's an arena shooter, like Quake, Halo, all those things that I just love going fast and killing everybody just fragging out <laughs> gotta go fast exactly since tom's not here to say it <laughs> not first or last motherfuckers but with yeah, that exactly. ladies and gentlemen i think that's all we got for you this week so till next week month game on bye bye